everyone to Shreveport and the Mainstay Independence Bowl. It's Ole Miss taking on Nebraska on a perfect day for football. No wind, plenty of sunshine, clear blue skies. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Hullinger along with Todd Christensen and no snow for this Independence Bowl. It's going to be a great day for football. And for a lot of these locals here, they have been following Eli Manning for a long time, back when he was in high school in New Orleans. And now he has a big target in Chris Collins, a deep threat. Well, his numbers don't stand out at you in terms of 49 catches, but what does stand out is 10 touchdowns. That leads the SEC. And when you think of the plethora of great receivers in the SEC, that's quite an accomplishment. Number eight has really established himself as the go-to guy for Eli Manning in this offense. On the other side, the state of Nebraska has a special bond with its university, with its football program, and Stacy Pates is downstairs right now. Stacy? Well, Jeff. Jeff, while Ole Miss is making their fifth appearance to the Independence Bowl, this is the first time for Nebraska to be here. Tickets did not sell as well as Nebraska had hoped, but from the looks of things, I think there are more fans here than they anticipated. The motivation for Nebraska is simple. They have to end on a winning note to, to make their winning season, their 41st winning season. They have to win today for that to happen. All right, Stacy. the Independence Stadium recently underwent a $32 million renovation, and it is in great shape for the fans today. And look at this weather today. The wind is inconsequential. The forecast is clear. Humidity is pretty low for this part of the world. The temperature is very nice as New Year's approaches. And we are underway with Ole Miss kicking off, and it skips into the end zone. Josh Davis will let it hit and Nebraska will take over the football here in the Mainstay Independence Bowl. Jamal Lord, he can run and throw. He averages almost six yards per carry with 1,300 plus yards and eight touchdowns. Has a passer over 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. Get a chance to see Diedrich from the eye back position. Also take a look at horn number five, the freshman who has 300 yard games this season. Starting lineups are brought to you by Coors Light. So it is first and 10 for the Cornhuskers. Here is the give straight ahead to Darren Diedrich. And Diedrich is up to about the 25 yard line where he is stopped. Pickup of about four or five. The offensive line for Nebraska, not as strong as past years, but the center John Garrison in the right tackle, Dan Billy Waldrop are the best up front for Frank Solich. Jesse Mitchell is not your ordinary nose tackle. Very quick with 12 tackles for loss. He will be key to stopping the running game for Nebraska today. Second and five from the 25-yard line. And the give. That's enough for a first down. Jamal Lord keeping the football in the tackle by Eric Oliver, the free safety for Ole Miss. It is a pickup of six. The star of the Rebels defense is the middle linebacker, Eddie Strong. Big and strong and quick because of injuries played in just nine games, but he does have 53 tackles. The key to the run support of the safeties. Matt Greer has had a terrific season with interceptions and run support. Eric Oliver, the leading tackle this year, 116, the most that they've had in eight years. On first down, Nebraska keeps it on the ground. Across the 35, down at the 36 is Diedrich. It is a pickup of three. We'll call it second and seven for the Huskers. Jamal Lord, Diedrich last year had 1,300 yards, 1,299 to be exact. But Diedrich, I think a little bit frustrated this year because hasn't had a lot of pitches. It seems the number 10 has a penchant for keeping the ball as opposed to pitching on that option. Now second and seven out of the shotgun formation with three receivers for Nebraska. Here's the handoff to Diedrich. Diedrich with room and into Ole Miss territory to the 48-yard line. It's a gain of 17. Tackle by Travis Johnson, the right quarterback. We talked about Deidre with Thunder Collins leaving. The idea was that number 30 was going to get that many more touches. It really hasn't, really has not panned out as you might guess. They combined for a little over 1,400 yards to Diedrich and Horn. But Horn is the guy that they're looking at, the youngster, the 190 pounder. And it's Judd Davies, the fullback, as he pounds ahead for about five yards for Nebraska so nothing fancy here on their opening possession here at the mainstay Independence Bowl keeping it on the ground and really pushing it at Ole Miss right now they must have been listening to Trev Alberts saying that early on they had to establish the line of scrimmage and that of course means Thomas incognito Erickson 
Garrison, Takawai, and Billy Waltrip. There is the pitch and the fake reverse up to the 45 yard line. That's going to be a loss of one. Nothing there for Darren Diedrich. And you take a look at Diedrich. He is in the top 10 all time rushers for Nebraska. Came into the game with 2,653 yards. A look at Frank Solich. Interesting when you look at that career mark to think that he may be in trouble, and that's what the scuttlebutt is in Nebraska. I find that strange with an impressive record. <laughs> the expectation there is more than just winning. And here is Jamal Ward run out of bounds along the Nebraska sideline. A pickup of four. A stop by Travis Johnson, his second tackle, the right cornerback from Shannon, Mississippi. Because of the fact that this is a bowl game with six losses, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for it. But now I see the punt team come on the field. I, I figured a fourth and three around that situation. They might want to give it a shot. But definitely not. So it'll be fourth and two for the Cornhuskers. Tied for fourth on the all-time bowl appearance with 41. Last year matched up with Miami in the Rose Bowl for the national title game. Kyle Larson is the punter and gets it away. A high floating spiral. And Nebraska downing it at the two-yard line, maybe the one, is Gerald Pippins. Great special teams work by Nebraska. A 41-yard punt, and they execute it perfectly. So Eli Manning with lousy field position, he will begin from his own one. It's all Miss turn to do it offensively. Mike Espy, the returner from Mississippi, does not fool Gerald Pippins as he stands right on the goal line, makes the catch, and he's heads up enough as he starts to lean into the end zone to drop the ball at the one yard line. Special teams for Nebraska have always been a forte. First and 10 for the one yard line for Eli Manning and the Rebels. Backing it in very close, eye formation, and Manning will keep the football, trying to give himself a little bit of breathing room. Tackled by Laney Hopkins. Eli Manning, it all begins with a talented quarterback at 6'5", strong, terrific arm, over 3,000 yards in the air. His interceptions grew to 15 this year from 9 last year. Certainly a big issue today. We talk about Eli Manning, but to take some pressure off him, Ronald McLennan is going to have to get some yards. He is the leading rusher for Mississippi with a paltry 342 yards. Starting lineups are brought to you by Coors Light. Gain of three, second and seven. Double tight end set. And man in motion coming to the near side. Manning wants to throw. And it is bobbled and dropped by Chris Collins. And the coverage by Fabian Washington was in his general vicinity. It'll bring up third down. The Ole Miss offensive line, the center, Ben Claxton, second team all SEC, the anchor of a line that allowed only 13 sacks and more than 400 passing attempts in 2002. And certainly somebody truly missed his number 57, Chris Kelsey, still the leading sacker for Nebraska at five and a half, having missed five games with a hamstring injury. He can go and get it. Third down, third and seven for Manning at Ole Miss. Three wide receivers, two to the right and one to the left. From his end zone, Manning firing, it's complete. All by himself is Biddle, who makes the grab. It's a gain of 13. First down, Ole Miss, and out of poor field position here in their opening set. Evidently, Nebraska goes into a zone, and Biddle is able to find the gap. Watch right here in the green area, backing up too far. Biddle just sits down, is wise enough not to run into the coverage of Kiffin Weigert, the weak backer. And as a result, first down for Ole Miss. So it's first down from the 15 with an eye formation behind Manning. Play action on the move, firing wide open again is the freshman out of Decatur, Georgia, Tay Biddle. And he is knocked out of bounds along the Nebraska sideline again to 20 and up for a first down, tackled by Fabian Washington. Going with a bootleg, always has him fooled. All the blue shirts, look at the ball. What a beautiful ball that is. I say that because inevitably, if you're a right-handed thrower, rolling to your left is always difficult. Manning makes it look easy on that toss to Biddle. Ole Miss is looking to record its sixth straight winning season for the first time since seven straight between 1965 and 71. So they've got a first and 10 from the 37-yard line. It started at their own one. Manning will throw across the middle. It's complete to the tight end who makes the grab. 
Eric Rice up with the football to stop by Ira Cooper. It's a gain of eight yards. The Nebraska linebackers, Barrett Rood led the team with 12 tackles for losses, and he is third in tackles with 82. He is a very active backer. Freshman cornerback Fabian Washington had four interceptions, led the team in passes broken up, and it's Dewan Gross and his 18 yards per punt return that provides the excitement in the secondary for the Huskers. For the Rebels, this is their fifth appearance in the Mainstay Independence Bowl. They defeated the Sooners the year prior to OU's national championship, and it's their 30th all-time bowl appearance. So second and short for Ole Miss. Manning on the handoff, and enough for the first down. Ronald McClendon stopped by Barrett Rude. And McClendon has enough with a five-yard pickup for Ole Miss. Eli Manning started off very well in the first six games of the season when they were five and one, but has struggled in the last six. In fairness to him, we should point out of the six losses that they had on the season, five of those six teams are bowl teams, and the sixth team was Alabama, who won the SEC West. So certainly they played to the level of the competition. You see the record now, David Cutcliffe. Manning on this drive, three of four and 40 yards. Now the first and ten from midfield at a timeout as Eli Manning wants to come over and talk with David Cutcliffe. So far, so good for Ole Miss on their opening offensive possession, finding some room in the Nebraska defense. Nebraska Ole Miss, part of Capital One Bowl Week. It is the mainstay Independence Bowl here in Shreveport. And each team has had an offensive possession. And, and, and Todd, I'm really struck by the fact that Nebraska did not help themselves. With a fourth and two, they decide to punt the ball in Ole Miss territory. Even though they pinned them down on the one-yard line, you figure with a team averaging over five yards per carry, they would have gone for it. And now Mississippi has their own offensive rhythm. So it's first and ten from midfield for Ole Miss. Here is Manning looking, going up top near sideline, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Mike Espy, but the coverage was good. Fabian Washington was along every step of the way. And Fabian Washington shows the smarts of a freshman. And what I mean by that, he's ahead of his time. He was able to battle and do the hand fighting and able to get away with it. Number three was all over. So second and ten from the 50-yard line on a perfect day for football here in Shreveport. See a lot of... Those red coats, Todd, red shirts everywhere in the stadium. Folks making the trek down from Nebraska. Here is Manning rolling to the right, setting and firing, and over the head of his receiver, who is well covered, Kerry Johnson from Oxford, covered by Pat Ricketts from Omaha. This time, Ricketts was not fooled by the bootleg. Stride for stride with the receiver is Ricketts. Nebraska making some adjustments in the secondary. And don't forget, remember, this defense for Nebraska is, remember they fired their coordinator. Jeff Jagram now is the coordinator, the linebacker coach, former defensive coordinator in Mexico State. They're going with some new defensive personnel, Jeff. Espy and Biddle to the right, Johnson to the left. Five defensive backs for Nebraska on third and 10 from midfield. Out of the shotgun, penalty markers flying. And this maybe Belton Johnson, the right tackle, maybe he was moving. It looked like uh, he was the man in motion there. Red ball, full start. Offense, five yard penalty remains third down. Now look at John Smith, our officials, as you saw, out of the Big East today. And that will make it just a little bit tougher on Ole Miss and David Cutcliffe. So third and 15 with it moved back five yards and again out of the shotgun is Eli Manning. Nebraska coming with a blitz in trouble is Manning and down he goes he is sacked at the 33 yard line it is a loss of eight. A fine job by Johnson Trevor Johnson from Lincoln who came to take Manning down. Well if this falls if if this doesn't fall into the heading of jailbreak, then I don't know what does. <laughs> All the white shirts just beats with a great swim move to the inside. Johnson is able to get over the top of the left tackle. In that case, it's Trey Stallings. Just beats him with the swim move in for the sack. So Ole Miss punting Cody Ridgeway. 
just gets it away. It's a low kick, and it takes an old miss bounce. It is scooped up by Dewan Gross, and Gross is brought down. As Ole Miss doing a pretty good job on special teams on the stop is Jason Washington for Ole Miss. A 43-yard punt and a three-yard return by Gross. Tonight, Capital One Bowl Week concludes its triple header at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 o'clock Pacific. The Wildcats, ranked number six of Kansas State, face the Arizona State Sun Devils in the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl Live from Qualcomm Stadium in beautiful San Diego, California. Darren Sproles, take a look at the kind of season that he has had for the Wildcats and all the yards that he's picked up. On first down, here is Lord with running room. Lord bouncing off tacklers. It's a sprint near sideline and brought down. A big pickup for the Nebraska Cornhuskers of 47 yards for Jamal Lord. Run out of bounds by Eric Oliver. You've heard the names before. There have been some pretty good ones. You've had Tommy Frazier. You've had Scott Frost. You've had Turner Gill. And, of course, last year, Eric Crouch. This is arguably the strongest of that group. As you can see, look at the stiff arm. Ouch. Just leaves Hutchins behind. And while he doesn't have the foot speed of Crouch, he is arguably the most powerful at six foot two, 220 pounds. Described by some as Mike Vick meeting Dante Culpepper. Certainly looked like it there. And here is the gift. The middle of running room is Diedrich, and if Diedrich stays on his feet, he might have busted off another 10 or 15 yards. It is a gain of nine. It'll bring up second and one for Nebraska. John Garrison and Junior Tagalai create the gap for Diedrich on the trap play, and you're absolutely right. He really just stumbled over his own feet. He anticipated leaning forward that he was going to get something to happen. The offensive line for Nebraska did not get it done as much as they had used to in the past in terms of statistics. They want to have a big day today. Nebraska offense, nine rushes for 95 yards already. Jamal Lord wants to take a timeout here, and he'll talk with Frank Solich as they have second and short. We'll take a break. Nebraska and Ole Miss from Shreveport. Back at Louisiana, I'm Jeff Hullinger along with Todd Christensen and Stacey Pates. Nebraska's first trip to Louisiana since the 1987 Sugar Bowl when they defeated LSU 30 to 15. And right now just keeping it on the ground, averaging 10 and a half yards per rush. And here it is, second and short, and it should be enough for Nebraska first down. Diedrich getting the first down after a gain of four. We are here at the Mainstay Independence Bowl. Nebraska taking on Ole Miss, the Big 12, against the SEC. Perfect weather here in Shreveport. It just couldn't be any better. And so far, it's been Nebraska grinding it at Ole Miss, keeping the ball on the ground and really powering past them right now as they look at a first down from the 12-yard line of the Rebels. Lord wants to throw up top into the end zone and over the head of his intended target, Wilson Thomas, who was a basketball player. Not sure if he will play for the Huskers in 2003. That's his first pass attempt. Kind of an odd call, I would say, when you're averaging over 10 yards a carry. The fullback, Judd Davies, just getting the first down. And even though he's six foot six, you pointed out he's a basketball player, the timing was, of that was ill conceived. You can see by the pump thing, Thomas almost out of the back of the end zone. And as I say, very surprising as effective as effectively as a running the ball to attempt a difficult pass on. Well, let's see if they keep it on the ground now. It's second and 10 from the 12 yard line. Here is Lord on the option. And he'll keep the football and gather it up quickly after a gain of one. A good defensive job by Matt Greer, the strong safety from Smithville, Mississippi, who came up to make the stick on the quarterback, Lord. It's a great play by Greer for this reason because he is playing the back. He actually comes up and plays them both, and at the last minute comes off the back and goes to Lord. If Lord has a weakness in the running game, it's his inability to make those decisions. He's certainly a terrific running quarterback, but in that case, when Greer plays them both, that means you got to pitch the ball. Yarick Johnson, the left tackle, the senior out of Atlanta, is limping off to the sideline and being replaced by McKinley Boykin. It is third down for Nebraska. Lord wants to throw. Bat it down! Fine job by Ole Miss. Eddie Strong, the ever-present middle linebacker, the star of the defense delivering on third down for the Rebels. It's so impressive with regards to Strong with an injury. He's been out four games, and he still gets named to the first team all-SEC. Number one, 6'4", 245 pounds, ideal 
physical specimen for the next level as a middle linebacker, right in the face of Lord to bat that one back. It is a perfect nod named for how Eddie Strong plays. Coaches all SEC team. A 29 yard field goal attempt for Nebraska. It is up and it is good by Josh Brown. So Brown has put Nebraska on the scoreboard. 3 0 with Ole Miss here in the first quarter of the Mainstay Independence Bowl. From everyone here at Barksdale Air Force Base, we want to wish you a safe and happy new year. And to all of our men and women overseas, we're waiting for your return home safely. God bless. We were at Barksdale yesterday, Todd, where the majority of our nation's B-52s are kept. And we're doing some important work there. We'd like to take a quick time out to say happy holidays to all the hardworking men and women watching on the American Forces Network and assigned to the Naval Air Station in Sigonella on the island of Sicily, Italy, especially those sailors watching AFN Inside Jocks Sports Bar. Hope you're enjoying today's mainstay Independence Bowl from Shreveport, Louisiana. Well, it's curious, Todd, with the way Nebraska has been grinding the ball at Ole Miss, where they're physically so imposing, and, and the play calling changes where you start throwing the football. We did Mississippi a favor. Josh Brown kicking off. It's high, and it's short, taken by Chris Collins. And Collins is taken down by the Nebraska special teams. It's a pickup of 14 yards. Tomorrow, Capital One Bowl Week continues at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2. Billy McMullen and the Virginia Cavaliers meet Avon Coburn and the West Virginia Mountaineers in the inaugural Continental Tire Bowl from Erickson Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. Then, on ESPN at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, two of the top running backs of the nation square off in the Alamo Bowl, brought to you by MasterCard as Colorado meets Wisconsin. First and ten from the 28-yard line for Ole Miss. Manning wants to throw in trouble and brought down at the 20-yard line by Chris Kelsey. As he makes the sack, he has five and a half on the season, now making six and a half. It's a loss of eight. Here's the speedster Kel Kelsey just going right past the right tackle. And that's the quickness of number 57. Johnson unable to deal with him. Watch the club of the right hand. You used to see Reggie White do that from the same position, but he knocked the tackle down. Kelsey does it with speed and quickness. Reminds me a little bit, I think there was a pass rusher at Nebraska, 93, what's that guy's name? Tra tra Travis, Travis, tra 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 somebody or other. Second and 10 from the 21, three wide receivers for Ole Miss. And this time they will run the football with no success into the heart and into the bulk of the Nebraska defensive line. It is a gain of one for Ronald McClendon from Louisiana as he is made uh, really punched down in a hurry. We mentioned at the top of the show the necessity of Mississippi getting Ole Miss rather getting some semblance of a running game because if Kelsey and his mates can continue to white knuckle it and get in their sprinter stance and go after Manning it is going to be a long day for Peyton's kid brother. And here facing another third and long four wide receivers two to the right two to the left operating out of the shotgun formation is Eli Manning. And there's the snap, and it will stop it. And this will be a delay of game against Ole Miss. Two penalties against Ole Miss here in the opening quarter. Look at David Cutcliffe. Well, the struggles that Nebraska had in the opening drive defensively against Mississippi appear to be long gone here. It's two sacks already on the offensive line of Mississippi. We've only given up 13 coming into this game. Espy and Johnson to the left, middle to the right on third and long from the 17. Shotgun for Manning. Firing and completing, but knocked down immediately at the 21 yard line is Bill Flowers by Fabian Washington, a gain of five. This is what's in vogue now for defenses at both the collegiate level and the professional level, and that is, is that you come with the blitz knowing that their fire or their hot route is that short slant or the out route. You tackle it for the short game. Nebraska, once again, in great situation because of the great punt returner in Gross. How about for Ole Miss, their first five plays, 49 yards, and their last seven, a loss of 17. Cody Ridgeway gets away the punt. It is high, fine punt taken at the 22-yard line by Gross. 
And one, two penalties go down. There's another one. Make it three as he is gathered in at the 18-yard line. A 53-yard punt by Ridgeway and a loss of three by Gross. Tackle by Rob Robertson. Pat Ricketts with the obvious push in the back, as you pointed out. Three different officials were able to see it. And now the field position, which looks so promising for Nebraska, now is going to be atrocious, probably around the 13 or 14-yard line. Great punt by Ridgeway coming into this coming into this game around a 43 yard average. During the return, illegal block in the back, return team. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. As Nebraska starts thinking about 2003 and beyond, there are some changes in the coaching staff of Frank Solich and some change of philosophy of how plays are called. Well, Turner Gill certainly is qualified. He has been at Nebraska quite a while. He would be somebody that they should look to as an offensive coordinator. I know there are another, another a myriad of names that are being bandied about, but the young man who nearly delivered a national title for them back in 1983 certainly would be worthy heir to the play call in the Frank Soul. The football team that was Mark yeah. Rose oh. here. Irving Fryer. Irving Fryer on first down. Lord wants to throw, going long downfield. Man! shot his target Wilson Thomas was all by himself for a big game but Lord missed it well Jamal Lord knows that this is his fault the 46 percent watch right down the middle of the field he gets the two deep coverage look at this just wide wide open now as a quarterback there's a tendency here to want to throw a perfect ball. Lord needed to throw a pillow there. Just throw it up for a catch because he was that wide open. Lord's goal was a 55% completion ratio, and it didn't happen for him this year. David Horn gets the call, and he picks up about a yard before knocked down by Daniel Booth, who is the nose tackle, making the stop. Well, the offense has struggled in the second half of the season as well as this year compared to last year. You can see the numbers. 2001 versus 2002 and of course part of the difficulty as we pointed out with regards to Jamal Lord is his ineffectiveness in the passing game a terrific runner but is yet not a competent thrower third and nine for the Huskers shotgun here is Lord now on the option the pitch and let's see nothing there the Ole Miss defense doing a fine job as they stack up the pitch man David Horn who couldn't get anything Eric Oliver the free safety making the tackle it's a gain of seven it'll bring up fourth down one of the few times that you'll see Jamal Lord pitch and it turned out to be the right decision but he couldn't make it he couldn't make enough people miss and we mentioned Oliver 116 tackles on the season from his free safety position able to drop him before he could get the first down Kyle Larson is the punter and he will stand at his four yard line he is out of Funk Nebraska Mike Espy is the deep man Jason Armstead normally has those duties for Ole Miss but academically he is ineligible for this football game today Larson gets rid of the punt it is low it is short and it is gathered by the return man Mike Espy and Espy is brought down in a hurry at the 45 yard line for the Rebels a 37 yard punt and a two yard return Next Thursday, it's a battle between two Oceans' top quarterbacks. Heisman Trophy winner Carson Palmer leads the Trojans of Southern Cal up against Heisman runner-up Brad Banks and the Iowa Hawkeyes. The FedEx Orange Bowl at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Time on ABC Sports Championship Television. I think the key to this game, though, may not be either one of those two gentlemen, but it might be the offensive line, the senior, senior late offensive line for the Hawkeyes. It's been so dominant this year. On first and ten for Ole Miss, and hit almost immediately is Ronald McClendon, Lakeven Smith, the freshman out of Macon, Georgia. On the tackle for the Huskers, it's a loss of one. It'll bring up second and 11. As you mentioned earlier, they just cannot abandon the run. Mississippi fans are probably saying to themselves, come on, come on, just forget it. Let's throw the ball. They can't do it. They've got to keep, they've got to keep the defensive line and linebackers of Nebraska honest. Last six carries on the ground for Ole Miss have resulted in a loss 
of 10 yards. On second and 11, Manning coming to your side. It's complete and nothing there whatsoever. The grab is made by Chris Collins, but well defensed by Nebraska. Pick up a one. It'll bring up third and ten. Tackle by T.J. Hollowell. Hollowell makes the tackle, but it's Fabian Washington at the corner that forces it. He recognizes it earlier and steps up into the receiver. And as a result, he has to cut back inside into Hollowell. I'm, I'm impressed with number three. As a freshman corner, he's playing some very good football. So another third and long for Ole Miss. They'll go with two receivers to the left, one to the right. On third down, the Rebels are 0 for 3. Manning the straight drive. Raton swings it out. It is caught and then dropped immediately as Ronald McClendon. Fine defense by Lornell McPherson from Omaha. And a penalty marker has been flown, thrown along the Nebraska sideline. That'll be refused. That's a great open field tackle on the part of McPherson. Situation there, if, he, if he's able to break the tackle, maybe he can get the first down. Instead, McPherson drops him by the ankles. Nebraska will refuse this and force him to punt. So the Nebraska defense not allowing anything right now, Todd. Holding office. The penalty is the climb. Fourth down. So it'll bring a fourth down. David Cutcliffe whose name keeps resurfacing in Kentucky and asked that question uh, this afternoon said no interest happy to not not planning on going anywhere except home after this ball game Cody Ridgeway at the 32 yard line and Dewan Gross is deep for Nebraska Ridgeway gets rid of the punt it's a high floating spiral and taken by Gross Gross spinning and brought down at about the 21 yard line it's a 39 yard punt and a six yard return so we'll see Jamal Lord and the offense of Nebraska Matt Greer on the tackle on special teams for Ole Miss pretty excited is is uh, is Jamrock and justifiably so the defense has played very well here the last couple of series you can see the people who released there George Darlington in the secondary had been there some 30 years Craig Ball defensive coordinator for eight years but it seems to me that there is some spillover from last year's Miami and Colorado games, Jeff. And I think that's one of the reasons why they made the changes. Here's Lord on first down, trying to bust a move, cut a fake, and taken down at the 30-yard line by Von Hutchins, who makes his first tackle of the ball game. It's very close to a 10-yard pickup and very close to a Nebraska first down, depending on the spot. I, I'm sorry, you know, in the course of this replay, we'll get a chance to see the strength that we talked about, but I'm just caught off guard by the fact that my partner just said that Jamal Lord busted a move. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I, Do you think I'm too I thought, old to I speak thought, the language? I, I thought you were hip impaired. I was wrong. <laughs> sure indeed, Jamal Lord busted a move for a nine-yard game. Wow. Second and short now for Nebraska. Here is the pitch to the eye back. First down for the Huskers and more. David Horn is tripped up at the 39 yard line by Travis Blanchard it is a pickup of eight yards and move those chains for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. David Horn reminds me a little bit of you remember Jarvis Redwine sure. and I am hip there they're looking for him for the quickness and speed he's only 190 pounds he's not that typical bruiser eye back but he does provide some speed for the Huskers that maybe they haven't had in the past and that will be the end of the first quarter. So far, Jamal Lord in control for the Nebraska offense. We'll take a break from Shreveport on a great afternoon. The Mainstay Independence Bowl from Shreveport, Louisiana, where if you're a football fan, you can find etouffee, gumbo, crab cakes, stuffed shrimp, and pastries here at the stadium for under five bucks. Not bad. And here is Nebraska's David Horn. It is a pickup of about three yards. It'll bring up second and seven for the Huskers. Well, you know what? The game track is what's been happening here is G Funk Yo 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 Jeff <laughs> was able to point out the fact that his his homie Jamal Lord busted a move there in the first quarter. He has proven to be as strong a runner as advertised. And of course, Manning has been under constant pressure, already sacked twice in the first quarter. David Horn on second down, a gain of five, and he will be a couple of yards short of the first down. Eddie Strong is there, the middle linebacker. Strong fighting through injuries this season, played in nine games, but he is a tremendous football player, Todd. He's, wherever the football is, you can always find Eddie Strong. 
Nebraska is 0 for 3 on third downs. Here's Lord on the pitch. David Horn. Horn with some running room and a first down for the Huskers in Ole Miss territory, a gain of 12 yards. Well, the blocking at the point of attack is outstanding, and this time the pitch is made. Take a look at the pulling guard right out front. There's the pitch. Great cut block. Now you have receivers blocking to the outside, and except for that move right there, the tackle at the end, there by number 26, Oliver. Otherwise, Horn goes the distance. First down from the 42 with receivers right and left for Jamal Lord. And Lord play action with plenty of time going long. Up top man out there. And the catch is made. Touchdown, Nebraska. Matt Herian of Pierce, Nebraska makes the touchdown grab, but there's a penalty marker at the 20. If it stays, it's a 41-yard touchdown strike. I think it was I think it was defensive holding. Holding. Kiss the defense. The penalty is declined. Result of the play, touchdown. Number 42, Harrion, has been unbelievable this year. He's averaging 43 yards a catch. He has six catches, and three of them are for touchdowns. And the question everybody keeps asking, and why isn't 42 playing more football as a result of every time he touches the ball, something good happens? And just a freshman. Josh Brown with the point after attempt for the Huskers, and it is good. So Nebraska taking a lead on Ole Miss. Six plays, 80 yards, two minutes and 15 seconds of time. And go Big Red is the champ from all the locals who came from Omaha and Lincoln and Ogallala. And a look at the freshman Matt Harrion from Pierce, Nebraska, who makes the touchdown grab for the Cornhuskers, up 10 0 now on Ole Miss. And you see the drive time where Lord, very efficient, no complaints about that, is you're running the ball and you're throwing a touchdown. Total offense, in fact, for Nebraska right now 187 yards, 146 of them are rushing, and Ole Miss 36 yards. Jeff, check this out now. Harrion has seven catches for 301 yards and four touchdowns. Now, <laughs> I, you know what? Call, call me silly. You got to get that guy the ball. Absolutely. Josh Brown kicking off. It is high, it is deep, and it bounces about six yards deep in the end zone and out of the end zone. So Ole Miss will get the football at their 20-yard line, down 10-0 to Nebraska. Well, one of the things we talked about, Oliver being a great tackler, but he's not the cover guy. And this shows how good Harry and is his concentration. Watch him right there get grabbed and pulled, comes back on his route, focuses on the ball, and still comes up with it. I tell you what, I know he's probably not much of a blocker at 215 pounds, but when you have a threat like that down the middle of the field that runs as well as he does, I can tell you from experience, Jeff, a guy that can run well from the tight end position changes what you do defensively. On first down for Eli Manning and Ole Miss. Manning rolling right and firing the football. Fine throw, catch by Tay Biddle along the Nebraska sideline. It is a gain of 14, and a lot of pressure from Barrett Rude, the middle linebacker, who was chasing Manning, but that's enough for a Rebels first down. And this shows how good Manning is, his ability. Take a look at the misdirection. He's gonna get hit right in the mouth and still able to deliver the ball right on the money. This comeback route right there to Biddle just before he goes out of bounds. I tell you what, that shows a lot of courage on the part of number 10. First down from the 34-yard line. Middle in motion. Here is Manning in trouble. And Manning is sacked and brought down at the 26-yard line by Trevor Johnson. That's his second sack of the ball game. And Cooper is over there as well. For the Huskers, it's a loss of eight. One of the things that you can't do necessarily is cut block at the ball line of scrimmage, ball. especially if you've got an athletic defensive end. There's the cut block by the back. Trevor Johnson able to step over it. And as a result, as you pointed out, Jeff, pair of sacks for number 88 today. Boy, Johnson on one side, Kelsey on the other. That's, whew, that's no fun. Go second and long from the 27-yard line, down 10 nothing to Nebraska is Ole Miss here at the Mainstay Independence Bowl. Shotgun formation with four wide receivers for Eli Manning, who takes the snap 
And it is another delay of game. It'll be the third penalty against Ole Miss. Two of them have been delay of, of uh, game. Todd, do you have any sense about Eli Manning if, if you were advising him? And I know you're being the father that you are with Toby, who plays for Brigham Young. And if you're Archie Manning, how do you advise him? Do you, do you keep him at Ole Miss for another year? Or do you say, well, you know what? You're ready to go. Our Archie, Archie needs no help whatsoever. He knows exactly what he's going to do. But just on the outside looking in, I think he does need the fourth year. On second and 23, the drop play up the middle to the 25-yard line is Ronald McClendon, who is wrapped up by Lornell McPherson, the right quarterback. It's a gain of three. Once again, McPherson with an excellent open field tackle. It appeared that there was a lot more running room for McClendon, but number one closed the gap. Once again, you have a third and forever. Well, they've had a bunch this. of these here in the first half, haven't they? No way to beat Nebraska having third and forever. Leaping, getting away is Manning on the run near side. Fine throw. The catch is made by Kerry Johnson from Oxford, Mississippi. The stop by McPherson. It's a gain of 17, and it will be short of the first down. Lanny Hopkins makes a big, he makes a bad decision here. What you always do is run at the quarterback. Here comes the blitz. Now, right here, instead of jumping, run around the man and force him back towards your defensive ends. It looks like an athletic play, and it may make the highlight real, but it doesn't help you defensively. The result is the accurate number 10 gets out to the outside and delivers the ball on the money. It looks like Bob Beeman at Mexico City in 68. Cody Ridgeway is the punter, and he has had plenty of these so far. This one, fine punt that turns over, taken by Gross. Penalty marker goes flying as he is gang tackled at the 12 yard line. A 49 yard punt, a three yard return by Gross, but the penalty marker is at the 16 yard line. One Look of the things, John Smith. one of the bright spots for Ole Miss has been their punt coverage. Don't forget that Nebraska was third in the nation coming into this in terms of punt returns, and Gross averaging 18 yards per punt return, but he has not been able to get anything going. Coverage for all this has been great. Good return, holding return team half the distance to the goal to the end of the run. First down. So it will be first down for Nebraska. A look at Eli Manning on the phone right now, trying to figure it out against this tough Nebraska football team in Shreveport. Here in Shreveport, Louisiana, for the mainstay Independence Bowl. The Big Red, Nebraska, on top of Ole Miss here in the second quarter. And the Huskers with a football. Have a first and ten at the six-yard line. For the eye formation. Here comes the option far side. Lord will try and turn it. He is spun down at the nine-yard line. It is a gain of about two and a half, perhaps three yards. Ole Miss, all of Lord. That's the eighth time they've earned the option now, and that's the sixth time that he has kept. But here, close to your own goal line, I think that makes sense. I think that probably in the huddle he said, look, only if the entire team is on top of me am I going to pitch because I don't want to take any chances that close to their own end zone. Second and seven from the ten. And here is a pitch. It is to Dietrich across the 15 down at the 16. Von Hutchins is there, a gain of six. Let's go downstairs to Stacy Pate. Stacy. Well, I have with me the managing director of this is Beverly Moore. Beverly All right, a microphone that's cutting out. We will try and go back to Stacy here as soon as we possibly can. Very important here for Mississippi to not let Nebraska drive 90 plus yards. They really have to get a stop here. Third and one with a big offensive line for Nebraska. Nebraska one for four on third down conversions. And Lord will keep the football and plow ahead. He should have enough. 
for the first down for the Huskers. Gain of two. You know, when you think about Nebraska, you think about the great tradition of eyebacks and all those wonderful talents. But the last couple of years, it has been the quarterbacks that have been the leading rushers for the Nebraska offense, which is curious. And there have been some, uh, there was a, a story in the Omaha newspaper this week talking about if that will return to the old days when the eyeback was indeed you know, the player that was featured offensively. First and ten from the 18. Lord wants to throw. Setting going long. And it is intercepted. Picked off by Von Hutchins. He's got some running room. Look out. Coming to the near side is Hutchins. And knocked out of bounds at the 27-yard line by the quarterback, Jamal Lord. It's a return of 27 yards by Hutchins. His sixth interception of the season of 2002. Hutchins gets a gift here, and this is a problem for Nebraska because two receivers are going to be right together. Take a look down here. You're going to see right here, you're going to have to see two receivers right together. This is a ball that should not have been thrown. The ball is overthrown by a good three yards. Hutchins is able to pay attention. You see the two receivers in the same area, which made no sense whatsoever. Hutchins able to get to the sidelines. Nice return for Ole Miss. Great turnover for the Rebels. So let's see if Ole Miss can capitalize. Here is Eli Manning over the head of Rick Rosano. Let's go back to Stacy. Okay. We're all set, Stacy. Well, let's try this one more time. Beverly Moore, we're so glad you're with us. She's the managing director of Mainstay Funds. How important is it for Mainstay to be involved in the Independence Bowl? The Mainstay Independence Bowl to Mainstay Funds and New York Life Investment Management is an outstanding opportunity for us to remind investors that they should be planning for their college educations for their children. And this is getting exciting. How special is it to be involved in such a great event that's turning out to be quite a good game? Oh, outstanding. And it's a lot of fun for us to be here and to support college athletics. Well, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you. On second down, Tate Biddle can't hang on to the football. A look in pattern, and the ball was a fine strike, but he can't come up with it. And it'll bring up third down. Surprising because Biddle's been having a pretty good game. He has three catches coming into here the second quarter. You see the frustration on Manning's face because he doesn't want to come up with a third in so long. Very catchable ball. And Biddle didn't need to leave his feet. What happens is the receiver will leave his feet to cushion the ball against his chest. If he keeps running, he'd have made that catch a lot easier. All right, here's third and long from the 27-yard line of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Ole Miss down 10-zip here in the second quarter. Manning will throw, and it is complete. The catch is made. Trying to get it up for the first down is Chris Collins. It is a gain of 12, and enough for a first down for the Rebels. Pat Ricketts on the tackle for the Cornhuskers. Ricketts gave him way too much room. Collins is just going to run a, a simple hook route. Ricketts backs up too soon, but again, that's the relationship that Manning has with Collins, his go-to receiver. Ricketts has no chance in closing on the ball because Manning knows exactly where he's going to be. Easy first down for a miss there. On first and 10 from the 16-yard line. And the handoff right up the middle. And Tremaine Turner with his first touch of the ball game nicely done he picks up five through the heart and soul of the Nebraska defense that's what you call fresh legs you can tell number 47 has just been chomping in the bit to get a chance to come in and play he just threw his body in there unfortunately his knee dropped he didn't quite get as many yards as he could have but it's exciting when you get in there and get your first shot at it. second and five First possession in Nebraska territory. Rolling, and it is deflected and incomplete. But for a moment there, it might get picked off around the 20 yard line. Adams, the right end, is the man who was able to get the pass block. Well, Des Moines Adams has seen this play action enough on the bootleg. This time he's not fooled. He does not go with the play fake and is able not only to get in the face of Manning, but to get a piece of the ball as well. Good discipline on the part of Adams. So many times the defensive ends chase the play to the backside and lead the freedom. On third down for Ole Miss. Here's Manning into the end zone. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Carry Johnson up with the ball. And the Rebels are on the board. An 11 yard touchdown throw from Manning. Lionel McPherson, who has done so well 
tackling in the open field. In that case, he was burned by Johnson coming in on the slant route. Manning able to read it and delivers it on the mound. Points off the turnover for Ole Miss. Six plays and 27 yards. Point after attempt is up, and it is good for Ole Miss, and they are on the board. So 10-7, Nebraska leads Ole Miss here in the second quarter. Eli Manning now six yards away from becoming the career Ole Miss passing yards all-time leader. As Miller at 63-11, and Eli Manning almost there with the touchdown pass to Kerry Johnson. And Ole Miss back in the ballgame. I'm feeling a little knot in my stomach as to the tension is to whether or not I get it. Right? <laughs> Kicking off is Ole Miss, and it is high, it is short, taken at the five-yard line. And a penalty marker goes flying, and there is another one. As Josh Davis on the return, a 17-yard return. Let's see what the penalty is all about. John Smith is our referee today, and his crew is from the Big East. So two holding calls. Well, they'll certainly take the one that's closest, and the flag is sitting <laughs> on the 19. I, I, I don't know what the deliberation was on that one. <laughs> holding at this spot is the climb. Holding the penalty to half the distance to the goal. First down. Tonight, Capital One Bowl Week concludes its triple header at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 o'clock Pacific. The number six Wildcats of Kansas State face the Arizona State Sun Devils in the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl live from Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego, California. Terrell Suggs. Take a look at the season that he has had. We'll see plenty of him tonight. Well, he's going to be—he's going to have to have some energy because El Roberson's not exactly a sitting duck. El Roberson runs that option as well as any quarterback in the nation. There's David Cutcliffe. On first down, here is Lord on the pitch, and no separation at all with David Horn. And it is no gain. Justin Wade, the middle linebacker, knocks him out of bounds. I'd call to come to the short side of the field. And, and again, you question sometimes the play calling, and that's not simply because Nebraska has struggled this year, but early in the game, it seemed that they were quite effective between the tackles, just going with the eye back and some basic plays. It seems like they've regressed back to the option in situations that frankly don't make a lot of sense, Jeff. Frank Solich, fine fullback. His time in the mid 60s. First of all, for baseball, too. Over 200 yards against the Bears. Fullback in 1965. Here is second down, and Jamal Lord is bumped and brought down after a gain of two by Landrum, the left end out of Detroit. Jermaine Landrum on the stop for Ole Miss. It appeared that there was some sort of discombobulation in the backfield because the, there was nothing smooth about those fakes. Because Lord follows the full back in. It just wasn't quite in sync. And now Nebraska has their own third block to face, and they've struggled on third downs this game. Pilkington and Thomas will come to the near side with an eye formation on third and seven. Lord play action on the run, and it is caught. Caught at the 31-yard line of first down by Wilson Thomas. What a fine grab, a 21-yard pickup, and tackle by Von Hutchins, the man who came up with a pass interception last series. This is a great, this is a great catch because there are people in Lord's face, and he throws the ball behind. One of the advantages of having the long body, the six foot six inch Thomas does a tremendous job of reaching behind, getting hit on the head, and nonetheless hanging on to the rock. Uh, the Lord really throws the ball better on the run than just standing in the pocket, doesn't he? Here's the pitch on first down. It's Horn, and Horn gets away from one tackler and stretches out. Nice second effort 
as he is up to the 37-yard line. Travis Blanchard, who is uh, in the defensive secondary, it's a pickup of six, second, and four. And that last play was huge for this reason. If they force Nebraska to punt and get the ball back at midfield with the momentum they had on the touchdown pass from Manning, instead now Nebraska starts to get their running game going between the tackles. Second and three from the 38-yard line. The handoff. It is DeHorn bouncing off tacklers and up to the 45-yard line. It's enough for a first down for Nebraska and a gain of seven. Tackled by Matt Greer, who you just saw having his ankle taken. Well, we talked about Jamal Lord and his skills from the running position. We talked about the coterie of great quarterbacks at Nebraska. Take a look at the contrast between Lord and Crouch. This just goes to show the numbers aren't anything, of course. The touchdowns are significant. Otherwise, you think that statistically they're quite, quite close. But again, there is something to be said for the fact that Nebraska last year played the national title in addition to the six losses. Double tight end set and bouncing up is Darren Dietrich, and Dietrich is stopped by Travis Blanchard. It's a gain of five. It'll bring up second down and five. Shows how effective the offensive line is, is that he stumbles and looks like not much of a run, and you look up and it's second and five. Once again, we talk about the offensive line for Nebraska. Certainly doing its job. Huskers with a second and five from midfield. 10-7 here. That's out of five minutes to play in the first half. Here's the handoff. Straight up the middle is Judd Davies, the fullback, and there is not much there as he is brought down after a gain of two. So third down is upcoming. Ryan Hamilton is there for Ole Miss. That's a nice, and that's a nice tackle by Hamilton simply because of the fact that it looked like the fullback had some momentum, but he's able to drag him down. Right now, this is the statistic that stands out. Ole Miss's inability to get a running game going, but it just goes to show but there are different ways to get the job done. This is certainly a finesse versus strength game. Getting a turnover certainly helps also. Third and four from the 49. And here is Lord trying to cut it off, and he is short of the first down. As Ole Miss wrapped up by Travis Blanchard, it is a pickup of about a yard and a half. So here is fourth and two. And Todd, the last time we saw this was on the opening possession for Frank Solich, and he elected to punt the ball. And he will again. You like that decision better this time than last? I do. Kyle Larson is deep, and Mike Espy is deep for Ole Miss. And it goes out of bounds. Let's see where they will spot this football and what kind of field position Ole Miss will have. Continuing to walk it off up to the 13-yard line. It's a 34-yard punt. For Nebraska, 10-7, Huskers lead. On fourth and two, Frank Solich elected to punt the ball. Now tell me why you like that decision better this time. Well, I think early in the game, they were running the ball so effectively they could have got it. At this point, Mississippi has a little momentum with that last touchdown. You don't want to give them the ball in midfield. On first down, the game straight ahead, and met at the line of scrimmage is Tremaine Turner by Barrett Rood, the hard-hitting middle linebacker. It's a gain of one. It'll bring up second and nine. A lot, of, a lot of talk. Let's talk for a moment about David Cutcliffe and staying at Ole Miss. And, and there is that, that Kentucky talk that just won't go away. And, and Todd, when there is smoke like that, there has to be some fire somewhere. Who, who's beating the drum on that? Is it Kentucky alums who would like to see him there? Lexington? Evidently. Second and nine from the 14-yard line. Here's Manning near side, and it's incomplete. Dropped by Kerry Johnson, the wide receiver. Well, I think inevitably when it takes this long to hire somebody, you're going to come back to people that you think might be taking a shot at. And of course, David Cutcliffe is a hot commodity in terms of his offensive mind. Everybody knows what he did at Tennessee with Peyton Manning and what he's done here with Eli, and before that, Romaro Miller. And certainly Kentucky is a team that throws the ball around and is very dependent upon the quarterback. So a man like Cutcliffe, his name will indeed be banded about even if he's not interested. Out of the shotgun is Manning coming near side, and it is incomplete through the arms of his wide receiver, Mike Espy. And the coverage was pretty good from Dewan Gross for Nebraska. It, occur it occurs to me as I'm looking at Eli Manning coming off the field, 
the games that we've done this year, we've done a lot of games to where things have been dependent upon the quarterback, but I'm not sure that I have seen a team this year that is so dependent upon a quarterback because with a non-existent running game, it seems to me the pressure of his surname, all of those things seem to add up. There's an awful lot of pressure on the shoulders of the team. Cody Ridgeway, high snap. He has averaged just under 50 per punt. This is another good punt taken at the 40-yard line by Gross. Penalty marker as Gross comes to the near side looking for a block or two. He gets it, and Gross is sprinting toward the end zone. Watch Gross go! Touchdown, Nebraska. Now, let's see what the penalty is all about at the 41-yard line. The flag is going to be the halo rule. The touchdown is going to count. Here we had been talking about how well Mississippi had been doing in coverage. As a result, they made the adjustments. Gross with the courageous, no fair catch, makes the catch, comes to the sidelines, gets a number of great blocks. Yeah, I was really struck by how patient he was. Violation of the two-yard belt, kicking team. A penalty is declined. It's out of the play. Touchdown. Gerald Pippins, number 31, has the key block on Eddie Strong that enables him to get in sixth career punt return for a touchdown. That is really impressive. And now we know why number five has been averaging 18 yards per punt return. Gross, one of the key seniors that we talked about at the top of the show, certainly put on a show right there with that return. 46-yard punt by Ridgeway and a 60-yard return by Gross. The point after attempt is up and it is good for Nebraska. Well, as we pointed out, Gross shows great courage right there. Espy is right in his face, but he doesn't care. He gets that one block. Now there's the first block. Here's the block by Pippins that gets him to the outside. Right there, he stays with Strong, and now it's a foot race. He's able to beat the punter. Now he cuts back. We'll get a chance to see it from another vantage point. Look at the white shirts on blue shirts. Just great job on the part of a number of blockers. There you saw number 20 springing him. That's Kiffin Wieger, the wingback. Off Gross goes. One of the prerequisites to success for Nebraska at any position, both in special teams and on defense and offense, is your ability to block downfield. Take a look at the white shirts. Just a great job of blocking for Gross. Gross only had to make the last guy miss, and of course the courage of not fair catching in the first place, the result of 60-yard touchdown for the Huskers. So the Huskers back on top by 10 with Ole Miss, 17-7 here. Late in the second quarter, a 60-yard sprint by Gross. And Nebraska kicking off. Josh Brown. And the momentum that we talked about that, that Ole Miss had after that touchdown now has dissipated as a result of that great kick return. Deep Chris Collins and Mike Espy for the Rebels. And Brown's kick is high. And taken about two and a half yards deep in the end zone. Espy models the football, scoops it back up, and is hit as he crosses the 10-yard line down at the 12 by Adam Ikes. And it is a return of 12 yards. And Eli Manning will take over. And we'll see if they can do something offensively to try and get some points on the board before going into the locker room at that. If you're going to bobble it and you're in the end zone, don't, don't make that decision. The kicking game for Nebraska has always been outstanding. The punter is terrific. The kicker has had a great year. And of course, that young man, number five, matches his number of interceptions. He has four interceptions on the season now. Four punt returns for a touchdown tying an NCAA mark. On first and 10 from the 12-yard line, receivers right and left for Manning. Play action firing, and it is complete. Catch made by Bill Flowers along the Nebraska line. It is a pickup of 11 yards and enough for an Ole Miss first down as they move the chains. Bill Flowers is the son of Richmond Flowers, one of the great high hurdlers. In fact, a lot of people may not realize this. Also, also able to in the Olympic trials, an NCAA champion, played football for the Dallas Cowboys, did his father, Richmond Flowers. Some of the Giants also, didn't he? On first and 10 from the 23, out of the shotgun formation now. Here is Manning with time, and almost intercepted a very dangerous pass. Whoa, to make the catch. It. It's caught a 
along the far sideline by Bill Flowers with Fabian Washington all over him. Well, what it, a strike by Manning. Well, it appeared that Washington going for the pick, it went right through his hands. Take a look at this. Number three breaks on the ball. Washington thinks he has the interception, goes right through his hands. What great concentration oh. on the part of Flowers getting his feet down and right in the midst of all of the Cornhuskers saying, no, 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 he didn't get it. Number 84 did indeed. Gain of seven, second and three for Ole Miss. Manning again. And almost intercepted as Gross had his hands on the football, and you can see the reaction he thought he had. Well, he should have had it. That one hit, that one hit him right in the chest. But again, this is what happens. Defensive backs are breaking on the ball, thinking they're going to make a hit, and then at the last minute, here comes the ball. But Gross knows that he should have had that one. Hit him in the breadbasket. And Manning now has the school record for passing yards. Third and two. Manning will throw on third down, and it is complete. The catch is made by Tay Biddle. And Biddle down at the 45-yard line, a gain of 14 and a first down for Ole Miss. We're inside two minutes to play in the half. Well, he, he doesn't have to be in this big of a hurry simply because of the fact that the clock stops on first downs. But nonetheless, he has them in their two-minute mode. Manning coming near side. It's complete. The catch is made by Rosano coming out of the backfield, the fullback. And Demario Williams on the hit. The outside linebacker, that's a gain of nine. Of course, going out of bounds gives them the opportunity to huddle up, possibly call two plays here, if indeed the next play is either not incomplete or they don't get the first down. Johnson and Biddle are to the right. Collins will come to the left on second and two from the 46-yard line. Manning near side, catch is made. That's enough for a first down, a late flag. At the 39-yard line, Chris Collins up with the reception. Gross working on him. Gross held him, working on him. That's the operative term. He held him at the line of scrimmage. It's our Big East officials huddle. John Smith. There he is. And that will go against Nebraska. Let's go to our studio right now and Chris Fowler. Jeff, coming up on the Dodge Halftime Report, highlights of the Rashawn Woods show. The Oklahoma State receiver putting on a show in Houston. We'll preview Kansas State and Arizona State out in the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. And Trev Alberts on the future, or at least the near future, of Nebraska's program. That's at halftime. All right, Chris, we look forward to it. 47 away. Certainly, Charles Rogers is a great receiver out of Michigan State, but if I'm Rashawn Woods, I, I might want to reach him. <laughs> Seriously. He could, he could shout when he was robbed. On first down, here's Eli Manning across the middle, and it's incomplete. Trying to make the grab was Kerry Johnson. A difficult catch with Williams in tow. And it'll bring up second down. Not only behind him, but Eli Manning needed to take a little bit off of that one. Threw that one a little too hard for a short crossing route. Eli Manning, a marketing major, fine student. Second down with five defensive backs for Nebraska now. Manning stepping up, and it's complete. The strike across the middle. The catch made by Mike Espy, still on his feet. And Espy is very close to the goal line. Very close. He has run out of bounds at about the one. It's a 41-yard strike. And the tackle by Dewan Gross. Nebraska comes with a blitz, but then they change their mind. The white shirts right there at the bottom of your screen aren't quite sure what to do. And as a result, the middle of the field is vacated. Espy shows some speed. This is the dig route, and that's where you do throw the ball a little bit harder. And number 10 puts it right on the hands of number 11. The result is first and goal. Ole Miss wants to talk about it at timeout, and Eli Manning will come over and talk with David Cutcliffe as they have something going here at the one-yard line inside of two minutes. They've got one timeout left, down by 10 with Nebraska. And we are back. A look at Eli Manning on this drive, how effective he has been. Now first and goal from the one. 
to cut into that Nebraska lead. Three tight ends. Handoff straight up the middle. Leaping in for six. Touchdown. Towered Sanford is into the end zone for Ole Miss. I want to talk to you about a theory that I've had that I think is there's a minute 32 remaining. You've got first and goal at the one. You and I have talked about this earlier. I wonder about kneeling down first time, not getting it, and then getting three tries to do it, and that way bleeding some time off the clock. Because now with a minute and a half remaining, Nebraska's got a little bit of time. One after attempt by Jonathan Nichols is good. So with a minute 32 left, the Rebels cut into the Nebraska lead. It's now 17-14, nine plays, 88 yards. Very stout-looking Ole Miss offense on that drive. Really was. He got in his rhythm. Now, you don't have a response to my theory. I, I like the idea. I mean, I, I don't want to put the ball back in Lord's hands, do you? I mean, if, if you are an offensive coordinator for Ole Miss, the more time you give the Nebraska offense, I, I don't think that's something you want to do. Well, one of the things one of the things that I think happens sometimes is maybe you're just not trusting, I guess. <laughs> no, 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 meaning that you want to score. And, of course, they have really struggled in the running game, and you right. have to get it whenever you can. But I've seen situations like that. I thought to myself, you know what, if you're confident enough and you can get it, you think you can on three tries, why not kneel down and take off, say, 40 seconds off the clock? Well, we'll see if that strategy is one that maybe Ole Miss should have employed. We will know in about a minute 32. <laughs> we'll see if that has any bearing at all here on the first half. As Nebraska will have an opportunity offensively to see if they can put some more points on the scoreboard. But Ole Miss has been scratching and clawing, trying to get back into this football game. And they have been hanging around here in the first half. Every time it looks like maybe Nebraska is going to pull away from them by just slamming the ball and running it right and left between the tackles. Uh, it has not materialized that way. Kick is high, and it is short taken by Josh Davis. And Davis is brought down at the 25-yard line. It is a return of 17 yards. Tomorrow, Capital One Bowl Week continues at 11 a.m. on ESPN2. Billy McMullen and the Virginia Cavaliers meet Avon Coburn. Now, the West Virginia Mountaineers in the inaugural Continental Tire Bowl from Erickson Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. Then, on ESPN at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, two of the top running backs in the nation square off of the Alamo Bowl. Brought to you by MasterCard. Chris Brown and the Colorado Buffaloes meet Anthony Davis and the Wisconsin Badgers. It all comes your way tomorrow as Capital Bowl Week continues. On first down, here is the throw. It's complete. Josh Davis makes the grab. But he was brought down immediately in his loss of four. It'll bring up second and 14. Jesse Mitchell is there, the nose tackle. One of the problems is if you're not a throwing team, it's difficult to set up a screen. The defensive pass rushers are not going to go back there, and they didn't in that case. They smelled that screen out from the get-go. Out of the shotgun now, Jamal Lord. He has two receivers to the left, one to the right. Off the option here is the pitch. It's Davis, and Davis is hit. And knocked out of bounds along the Nebraska sideline by Justin Wade. It's a pickup of four. So that will bring up third down and about ten. Ole Miss has a timeout remaining. And if Nebraska opts to run it out here, which I think that they probably should, Ole Miss might want to consider using their last timeout, getting the ball back into Manning's hands one more time. The Dodge halftime report is coming up with Chris Fowler and Trev Alberts, Mark May. All of that straight ahead. But first, it's third down and long for Nebraska. Four wide receivers, shotgun formation. Lord will keep the football right up the middle. Now take it to the outside and down at the 40-yard line by Lord. It is a pickup of 13 and up for the first down. Travis Blanchard is there, but a penalty marker. There are two of them now within about five yards of each other. You see the Ole Miss players clapping, so it would appear that that may be I, you know what? I, I didn't see any late hit. I wonder if that's taunting. Now, evidently, an offensive lineman hit somebody late. After the play was completed, dead ball, personal foul, offense. 15 yards. It's a safety spot. It'd be first and 10. Dan Ville Waldrup is somebody who has been aggressive all day and has been doing a nice job. 
right at the end of the play. Take a look at number 68. Going to come up right there a little bit late. And not only that, right in the back of Strong. Strong was actually lucky that that didn't happen. Didn't roll up on his leg. The official saw that and that would probably end the half here unless Mississippi Ops to use their timeout. One more play, Nebraska have to run. Not a bad half. Not a bad half at all. Look at the numbers on Jamal Ward. And here's the handoff. Running hard up across the 30 yard line is Josh Davis. And that will be the final play of the first half. It has been a good first half if you are a Husker fan, and a pretty good first half if you are an Ole Miss fan. 17-14 here at the Mainstay Independence Bowl from Shreveport, Louisiana. And let's go to our studio right now. We'll check in with Chris Fowler and the gang to get their thoughts, observations, witticisms, and musings about what we have seen. Shreveport on a beautiful December night. The Mainstay Independence Bowl, Nebraska and Ole Miss. The Huskers are up by three as we get ready to start the third quarter. A look at Eli Manning and his numbers from the first half, Todd Christensen. And we went into this ball game talking about Eli Manning and Jamal Lord, and they haven't disappointed anybody watching this football game. Well, they really haven't, but of course, a lot of pressure has been put on both of them. I look for Jamal Lord to run the ball a little bit more, if that sounds strange. Only nine carries. Remember, this guy was the leading rusher for them, and Eli Manning just has to keep doing what he's doing because they have still not been able to get into the positive integers where the rushing yards are concerned. Well, the way this ball game started, it looked like Nebraska was simply going to pound through Ole Miss. They were very strong running the football between the tackles and started throwing the ball a little bit and maybe lost some of the momentum and, and maybe some of the offensive energy as well. You can certainly second guess that play calling. And of course, now Mississippi gets the ball to begin the second half to get a chance to get back to what they were doing right at the end of the first half when they had that 80 yard, 88 yard drive to get the momentum. So Nebraska kicking off and we are underway here in the second half from Shreveport Louisiana and Ole Miss with the football along the far sideline and run out of bounds at the 24 yard line is Chris Collins. Let's go downstairs now to Stacey Pitts. Jeff thanks a lot. I spoke to both coaches at the half and coach Solich told me they need more consistency on offense and also on defense. He says he's very pleased with the way his guys have been in position. They've been a bit, almost able to get a couple interceptions but they didn't. They need to make those plays. Coach Cutliff on the flip side says they did some things good but they need to execute the passing game and they must stop big plays. He also assured me it's going to be another dogfight in the second half. All right we begin with Ole Miss with the offensive possession and the ball at the 24 yard line. Here is the pitch and it's Ronald McClendon near side turning the corner and it gets run out of bounds at the 31 yard line a pickup of 11 tackled by Josh Bullocks and that is a first down for Ole Miss. Here is the ESPN game track. Well certainly the biggest play of the game was the 60 yard punt return by Gross which turns out to tie an NCAA record four touchdown returns in a season. Of course on a personal front that is a team record Ole Miss passing yardage record formerly held by Romaro Miller has now been passed by Eli Manning over 6300 yards in his career. It is said that he stepped out of bounds so it's only a gain of eight. It'll bring up second and two up the middle and enough for the first down is Ronald McClendon. He is met by Williams the outside linebacker his second tackle of the ball game. That's a gain of five. And now finally they have gone over into positive numbers in terms of rushing yards. What a surprise two running plays to get a first down to begin the second half. So look at the total yards and you can see what Nebraska has done on the ground and what Ole Miss has not done. And then the flip side of that is Ole Miss throwing well Nebraska not. On first down Manning firing and it's incomplete good coverage on Bill Flowers by Fabian Washington and that will bring up second down. Even if he catches the ball, it's going to be a minimal game. Once again, I talk about the play of number three. Trev Alberts mentioned at halftime that they have a lot of young players that are going to do well. A number of freshmen have made major contributions for Nebraska this year, and one of them is number three. So second and ten from the 36. 
Ole Miss will go with three wide receivers, two to the left and one to the right. And here's Manning with time across the middle, and it is caught at the 48-yard line by Mike Espy. A gain of 12, first down Ole Miss, and they will move the chains. You can see him patting his chest, and Eli Manning is saying, that's my bad, but the pass protection here is outstanding. Plenty of time to survey the field, actually going to his second choice. He does throw the ball a little bit behind, but Espy able to slide and reach back and make the catch. Manning 17 of 28 for 200 yards. And he has one touchdown. Now a first down from the Ole Miss 49-yard line. Here is the handoff. Not much there for Ronald McClendon as he gets gang-tackled and pushed back by the Nebraska defense. Lanny Hopkins is there out of Rolla, Texas. He is the free safety. We talked a little bit about the number of freshmen that made impacts for the Cornhuskers this year. You don't often see at an institution like Nebraska, which, which is rich with tradition, the number of freshmen that participate as they have this year. We'll give you a chance to see a graphic after this play as to the number who did indeed make contributions this season. On second and 11, Manning across the middle and it's caught and caught at the 42-yard line by Bill Flowers. It's a pickup of 10 yards. He will be just a little bit short of the first down for the Rebels. Flowers, their possession guy, and there it is. Freshman back. We've already seen Harry in today with a long touchdown catch. Horn, an eye back who has a thousand yard runner written all over him. Pilkington, averaging nearly 20 yards per catch. He's put in position, of course, number three. We have documented that. Rossio here on this conference. Mike Espy is split to the right side on third down. Third and about two. Straight ahead on second effort is Rick Rosano, the fullback, and he picks up two and a half. That is enough for a first down for Ole Miss. I'll be honest with you, I was very surprised at that. I thought that they were going to go with play action. But as you pointed out, great second effort. Hit in the backfield, but not enough to take him off his feet, and the result is going to be a first down for Ole Miss. Rosano had a nice catch earlier. You see the Raz on his bicep. <laughs> Very nice tattoo if there is such a thing. Eighth play of the drive for Ole Miss. And straight ahead, the running back Ronald McClendon. And McClendon down to the 31-yard line. It is a gain of nine, maybe ten, depending on where they put the football. As Terping on the stop, the rover back. For Nebraska. Two missed tackles for Nebraska right in the middle of the line. But again, let's give some credit to the offensive line. A little dap where they're concerned. Struggled in the first half as we talked about. No positive yardage now coming out here in this initial drive of the second half. They seem to be asserting themselves. Second and short from the 32. The handoff. McClendon first down and more inside the 25. Tackled at the 24-yard line. On the stop is Adams. It's a gain of eight. And now it is the blocking up front by Ole Miss. Maybe pushing Nebraska out right now. Doug Buckles and Ben Claxton are the ones in the interior making the plays at center and left guard, freeing McClendon. And all this can do is benefit Eli Manning. Certainly the play action pass will be that much more effective if they continue to run. And you see. Who would have thunk this coming out of the beginning of the second half if they'd been running the ball this effective? On first down, Nebraska is showing blitz. And they'll continue to keep it on the ground. McClendon spinning. And he is brought down by Nebraska's Aaron Terping. It is a pickup of one yard. And you take a look at the numbers, at least in the first half, as Ole Miss negative 10 in the rushing department, and they've got 35 yards on this drive. Turpening is able to stop him in the hole with only a one-yard game, but what this does then as defensive linemen, you can no longer afford the luxury now of getting in that in that sprinter stance because if they're going to run the ball, you have to get back on your haunches a little bit. Second down for Eli Manning, a fine drive by Ole Miss against Nebraska. Coming near side, the catch is made, and but brought down immediately is Chris Collins by Dewan Gross, and we have seen a lot of Gross in this ballgame. Tra Trey Stallings, the left tackle, comes out and is going to have the block on Gross, but take a look. Gross is going to pull a matador. He fakes, comes back. Gross avoids Stallings. Take a look. Whoop. Right past him. 
If Stallings can make that block, that is going to be a first down, but Gross shows his ability to make people miss in a different way. Come up with a tag. All right, here's third and six, and you can see the numbers. Not Ole Miss on third down conversions. Five defensive backs for Nebraska. Rice in motion to the top of your screen. Here is Manning, and it is complete. The catch is made by Eric Rice, and he is gang tackled, smothered, no gain. Great pursuit by the Nebraska defense as they were all over Eric Rice. McPherson is there as is Bullocks, the rover, and the right cornerback converge. Manning needed to lead Rice a little bit. I'm not saying that he would have had the first now, but he throws the ball a little bit behind him, and as a result, he cannot cut up field. Now the field goal kicker will get his opportunity. Jonathan Nichols from Greenwood, Mississippi. This will be a 37-yard attempt. And here is the kick. It is long enough, and it is good. So Ole Miss has tied Nebraska to begin the third quarter. 12 plays, 57 yards. It is a brand-new ball game here in Shreveport. And a look at the pride of Birmingham, Alabama. David Cutcliffe, his fourth year at Ole Miss. He's 29 and 19. And the Ole Miss rushing yards. That is a huge difference, Todd. Well, John Latina, offensive coordinator for Ole Miss, ha also happens to be offensive line coach. I'm sure that that was the conversation at halftime. But we have to get something established at the line of scrimmage. He certainly did there. Kick taken at the two-yard line by Josh Davis. And Davis with some running room. And Davis is brought down as he crosses the 45-yard line of Nebraska by the wide receiver working on special teams, Chris Collins. It's a 43-yard return by Davis. Davis may not be the fastest return man, but he certainly is tough. There was a Tony Davis in the 70s, a number 25. He reminds me an awful lot of. Cuts back, breaks a couple of arm tackles. Now in the second, if you can just wait on Turpening to get across, but Turpening can't get there quite quickly enough, and as a result, Collins, a starter playing on special teams, makes the touchdown saving tackle. On first and 10 from the 46-yard line, the handoff for Nebraska. It is Diedrich, and Diedrich Getting into Ole Miss territory after a pickup of 12 enough for Nebraska first down. Tackled by Travis Blanchard. Now, we didn't call his name much in the second quarter at all. And I guess for some reason they had a predetermined idea of who is going to get snaps. But it seemed like with Diedrich at the eye back, they're a lot more dominant between the tackles. I would think Nebraska wants to let number 30 get his opportunities here in the third quarter. On first down, Diedrich again. Left side. Look out. Here goes Diedrich and brought down. Inside the 15-yard line by Travis Johnson. It is a gain of 28 yards. So Nebraska grinding it out now on Ole Miss here in the third quarter. Aaron Galladay, the tight end, their 290-pound tight end, just absolutely mauls Charlie Anderson at the point of attack. Number 99, look at that. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> Diedrich able to get to the outside. Man, oh, man. If I'd have been 290 pounds, I'd have been a great blocker, too. But I was not. You know, when you think Galladay, about it. however, is. Look ne at that stuff. Nebraska football over the years. That's how you think of Nebraska football. Big, powerful for a long game. First down, up the middle. Crunching through is Judd Davies. And Davies is brought down at the six-yard line. That's a gain of eight. So they are just powering through Ole Miss's defense here in an effort to try and take the lead back here in the third quarter. John Garrison, the center, you saw him on his knees and he started to wave his hands right there. And notice how quickly they get to the line of scrimmage. They want to establish the line of scrimmage just as Mississippi did in that last drive. On second down, met at the line of scrimmage and pushed back a fine hit on Judd Davies by the big man, Jesse Mitchell, who makes the stop. He's the nose tackle. Again, the decision-making process, that would have been Board would have been better served to pull it out. As you point out, though, the penetration on the part of number 95, Mitchell, a very quick nose tackle was outstanding. He's a junior from Moss Point, Mississippi, 6'3", 270 pounder. So it'll bring up third down and six. Three wide receivers. Option for Jamal Lord, yes. Here comes the option. It is the pitch. 
David Horn trying to turn the corner, and he is thrown out of bounds. A fine defensive play by Oliver, and it's no game. Eric Oliver comes from the free safety like the proverbial bat out of you-know-where. I really <laughs> thought he was going to get this first down, but watch the speed of number 26 as he closes on Diedrich. I really thought he had a great opportunity and had the angle to give Oliver credit, the leading tackle. More tackles. The most tackles anybody has had was 132 back in 1994. This guy had 116 from the free safety position. Outstanding. Josh Brown is the kicker, trying to give the Cornhuskers the lead. You see his numbers. This will be a 23-yard attempt. The kick is up, and it is good. So Nebraska back on top of Ole Miss, courtesy of Josh Brown, the 23-yarder. Nebraska does not lose football games. Oh, look at David Cutcliffe and his Ole Miss Rebels now down by three to Nebraska, courtesy of Josh Brown and his 23-yard field goal as Brown gets ready to kick off here. Once again, the kicking game playing a big part in that. Don't forget, the drive of Nebraska was the byproduct of that terrific kickoff return by Josh Davis. Collins and SB are deep. This is Chris Collins. And Collins across the 20 and tackled at the 24-yard line. It's a 24-yard return. Tonight, Capital One Bowl Week concludes its triple header at 8 o'clock Eastern time. 5 o'clock Pacific, the Wildcats at K-State, ranked number six, take on Arizona State from San Diego, California, and Qualcomm Stadium in Southern California, the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. Not too many people, unless you stay up really late on the East Coast, not too many people know about Andrew Walter. They just know about Suggs, but that young man has put together some serious numbers. The Holiday Bowl over the years has had some amazing games, including Brigham Young. Think about McMahon and all those guys. Remember Applewhite last year throwing from nearly 500 yards? Washington on first down Manning going long one-on-one -on -one coverage and it's incomplete he was trying to find Chris Collins who was well covered by Dewan Gross well interesting you remember they started the last drive by running the ball so effectively you pointed out negative yardage until the beginning of the second half when they're able to put together 37 yards on the ground that preceded the field goal McLennan getting the bulk of the yardage Key third down conversion by Razzano, and the result was Nichols with a 37-yard field goal. So second down for Ole Miss. They'll go with four wide receivers. Out of the shotgun is Eli Manning. Manning being chased on the run and throwing the football away, trying to set something up along the Nebraska sideline, but that wasn't going to happen. A lot of pressure coming from Chris Kelsey, the left end, who was all over Eli Manning. Pretty smart defensive lineman who read the screen. Now as he starts to roll, you can see the lineman, great coverage downfield, and Manning does exactly what he needs to do, and that's throw the ball away and set up for third down. Ole Miss has had seven of their 11 third downs out of 10 or more yards, and now they're looking at third and 10. And again, out of the shotgun is Eli Manning with three wide receivers. Manning in trouble. And Manning is sacked at the 20-yard line. The Nebraska defense all over Eli Manning. It is Chris Kelsey, who almost had him last time, gets him this time. Kelsey shows his, his watch how perse he perseveres. He's way to the side. He finally gets in, now has to circle around, takes the circuitous route, and is able to get him. But initially pressured by Des Moines Adams up the middle. Fourth sack. On Eli Manning in the football game. Cody Ridgeway is deep for Ole Miss. And Gross is deep for Nebraska. Might think about kicking away from him. And here's the punt. Five floating spiral. Here's Gross. Penalty marker. One, two from at the 42 and the 45 yard line tackled by Chris Collins. You know, Trev Alberts talks about this particular halo, halo rule and the problem, and he doesn't like it, saying that it doesn't necessarily take a lot of courage to make those catches. I happen to disagree for this reason because you can't always count on the guy covering <laughs> to, to think to himself that he's not going to take a shot at a guy. And so when you have to concentrate on the ball and cut up field, 
It's a great job by Gross for this reason, too. In addition to the penalty, his hustling up and catching it as opposed to letting it bounce is going to set up the Huskers in great field position. All right, we get ready to hear from John Smith. 35-yard punt, 8-yard return, and here's the call. Some offsetting penalties here. Perfect weather night here in Shreveport. Kick, catch, violation, kicking team violation, two yard halo. That's a 10 yard foul. All right. Well, evident. <laughs> <laughs> well. And they're still trying to sort it out. And maybe we'll get a. Uh, a fuller explanation of what exactly our officials from the Big East Conference are going to decide to do. I'm still surprised that after, frankly, I, the thing that surprised me about all of this is that they kicked a gross in the first place after that 60 yard touchdown return. I don't know why you do that. Gross not only has been outstanding on that one particular play, but in coverage, he's done a pretty good job as well. Waiting to hear about the two flags. I like number five, don't you? Paul Horning, <laughs> Harmon Wages. I got to Wages before you could. You, Ronald you Atlanta McClendon. guy, you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was watching on ESPN Classic. The 10 yard kick catch violation, kicking team, there's a spot foul. The dead ball foul will be from the secede spot 15 yards the other way. Okay, I was watching on ESPN Classic this morning. They were showing from two years ago that Snow Bowl here, the mainstay Independence Bowl yes. of Texas A&M and Mississippi, uh, State. Mississippi State. A remarkable football game. That was. That how, was fun. How different it is two years later. A close game here, 20 to 17, Nebraska leading Ole Miss. Back in Shreveport, I'm Jeff Hellinger with Todd Christensen and Stacey Pates, where Nebraska is leading Ole Miss by three points. And the Huskers with the football, a double tight end set of the eye formation. Here is Lord. He wants to throw and loses the football. I think it slipped out of his hand. And let's see what the it is incomplete. I think Ole Miss fans here thought they saw something else. Pressure by Charlie Anderson, the right end. I think you're right. It did slip out, and once again, I'm confused by this play calling. But you know what? Taking some chances. That's right. He pulled it back, and the ball goes down. The arm was going forward. No, wait, wait. Let's go up in the booth. Oh my gosh! I'm flashing back. Snow, New England Raiders. <laughs> you know, you Raiders guys, you just uh, that, that will never leave your sight. Got that right. Second and ten from the 37-yard line. And here is Lord. He'll keep the football, not cutting it against the grain, but the Ole Miss defense is there to bring him down. It is a loss of a yard. So a good job by the Rebels D as they read the option perfectly on the stop. Josh Cooper from Marietta, Georgia, outside of Atlanta, and Travis Blanchard, the secondary member, was back there to make the stop. What Ole Miss does very well there is they stretch the thing out. The longer you procrastinate the decision by the quarterback, the better off you are defensively. Number 44, Greer, has been a part of that. What a terrific year that he has had. 73 tackles, 12 tackles for loss, four sacks, and five interceptions, the latter category leading the SEC. All right, here's third down for Nebraska. Lord throwing quickly and complete, and good defense on Mark LaFleur by Ole Miss. It is a loss of two. Guess who? It's Eddie Strong, the all-SEC middle linebacker. Again, we talk about the predictability of the offense for Nebraska going between the tackles. Okay, it's predictable, but so what? It seems to work. Now you get out of your comfort zone a little bit, try some different things. We use that Bump Phillips line all the time. He dance with you, I, I don't understand what Nebraska's doing. Kyle Larson is the punter, and Chris Collins is deep. And it's a fake going up top and incomplete. As Nebraska was trying to go for it on fourth down, they did as Marquis e. Simmons was throwing the football. 
You can see the reaction of the head coach. Maybe he's unsure. Judd Davies, the fullback, gets the snap, rears back, and throws it just a little bit too far downfield. But I, I, I can't help but think I wonder, Marcus Simmons is on the receiving end trying to catch people off balance. The idea in a lot of cases like that, Jeff, is that it might be an audible, hence the reaction of Frank Solich. But why you would do that at, in this part of the field is beyond me. And now Ole Miss, big break. Been some curious calls from the Nebraska side Sir. today. On first down for Ole Miss. Here is Eli Manning looking left and right on the run and it is incomplete. Oh man, Chris Collins is trying to come up with the football. He couldn't make the grab. Josh Bullocks was out there. Sam for the fullback is out there and he's the one waiting on the ball. But just at the last minute, a body is going to flash in front of him. And the guy that flashes in front of him is Wiegert. And he just can't hold on to the ball. Sanford not usually fullback. Usually in the past, Ole Miss has had some fullbacks that are pass catchers, but this year they're all out. The numbers on Manning, 20 of 33, 212 yards. And a touchdown. Now, second down. Manning coming near side, and it is complete. The catch is made by Bill Flowers. And Flowers has run out of bounds inside the 20. Now at the 19-yard line, the stop by T.J. Hollowell. It's a gain of 16, and enough for an Ole Miss first down. The difference between why this play worked and the last time is take a look at Gross, how far off he is. Look at how far back number five is. And this time, Stallings is able to go after him. And Gross, playing, playing the role of Matador, enables Flowers to get extra yardage. Last time he got away with it, this time he did not. Number 70, the 317 pounder from Magnolia, does his job in pushing number five off the ball. First down from the 19 yard line. It's Turner in motion to the right side. Here is Manning going up top in the end zone. And it's incomplete, but a penalty marker about five yards deep in the end zone in the direction of Fabian Washington, who was covering Chris Collins. TJ Hollowell comes in on the blitz. And right in the face of Manning hence the reason why it was so inaccurate but it doesn't matter because it's going to be pass interference against Washington the freshman from Bradenton Florida pass interference defense penalties 15 yards for previous spot first down and again, remember in college football, it is not half the distance. Watch the left of your screen. There's a little bit of a collision right there. Now he's got him. He's held on to him just a little bit too long. And that's what the official sees. And Washington takes a peek to see as to whether or not he got away with it. And he did not. First and goal for Ole Miss. Justin Sawyer, the tight end, has checked into the football game. Morris, the quarterback, is in. Eli Manning is out. Morris, senior out of Mobile. He is under center on first and goal from the three. And here is the handoff. Trying to get into the end zone. Did he? No, he is just short of the first step of the touchdown is Sanford. And of course, Sanford's a little bit frustrated about that call because remember, he's the one that dropped that pass earlier in the drive. He wanted this touchdown. Is he hit down? I'm not sure you couldn't give him that touchdown. But they're going to call the knee roll down because what happens so many times when you roll like that, you're on top of the body of others. I think they could have given him the score. David Morris remains at quarterback on second and goal from the two. <laughs> and trying to get into the end zone for Ole Miss. Touchdown! Sanford in for six, and Ole Miss has taken the lead on Nebraska. It's his second touchdown tonight, and the Rebels storm back on the Cornhuskers. Well, of course, the biggest play of that drive was the poor decision on the part of Nebraska to go for a fake punt. Jonathan Nichols, the point after attempt is good. So Ole Miss now leading Nebraska by four. David Morris, the senior, in for Eli Manning on the short end goal, gets it done. 
Frank Solich, who played four years at Nebraska, spent 19 years as an assistant for Tom Osborne, was named head coach in 1997, and the pressure of coaching the Nebraska Cornhuskers was statistic like that. Well, you see the streak that is on the line in this game, 40 straight winning seasons. If Nebraska were to lose this game, they'd be 7-7, seven and seven, and that streak would end. Lee Rogers kicking off, taken by Josh Davis inside the five. And Davis is down at the 21-yard line. And that's where Nebraska will take over. A return of 18 yards. Johnson on the tackle for Ole Miss. Tomorrow, Capital One Bowl Week continues at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2. Billy McMullen and the Virginia Cavaliers meet Avon Coburn and the West Virginia Mountaineers in the inaugural Continental Tire Bowl from Erickson Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. Then on ESPN at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, two of the top running backs of the nation square off in the Alamo Bowl, brought to you by MasterCard. Chris Brown and the Colorado Buffaloes meet Anthony Davis and the Wisconsin Badgers. On first down for Nebraska, it is a pickup of one for Darren Diedrich, wrapped up by Jesse Mitchell, who is more and more active here in the second half. This is going to be interesting play calling here with regards to Nebraska if they're going to go back to what has been successful for them, which has been running between the tackles and letting the two tight end sets dominate. The last five Nebraska offensive plays have resulted in a loss of four yards here on the option. The pitch from Lord, and what a hit on David Horn. A big stick by number 26, Eric Oliver from Jasper, Alabama. The free safety came up to make the stop. It's a pickup of two. Seven tackles for Oliver now from his free safety position. The six foot two, 210 pounder comes in and puts the textbook on number five, Horn. As the two leading tacklers are safeties and the offense here in the 425 is designed to funnel tackles to those safeties. So unlike traditional thinking, safety having a lot of tackles is not a bad thing. Third and five for Nebraska. Here is Lord coming near side on the run, and it is incomplete. Had a man at the 37-yard line in Ross Pilkington, but the freshman from Fort Collins, Colorado, couldn't make the grab. And that'll bring up fourth down as Ole Miss and their defense have done a job on Nebraska. Just flat out dropped that ball. The youngster averaging over 20 yards per catch coming into this game had a 90 yarder against Iowa State, but needed to come up with that one. Kyle Larson is the punter, and Chris Collins is the deep man for Ole Miss. Here comes the pressure. And Larson gets rid of it. It is a booming pump that turns over. And here is Collins. And down at the 25-yard line is Chris Collins. It's a 59-yard punt and a 10-yard return. Well, the Nebraska seniors have performed admirably thus far. Dietrich, of course, has put together a couple of pretty good runs. We talked about Kelsey now with two sacks and a couple of other hurries. And of course, Gross with the 60-yard punt return for Nebraska. This is important to these seniors to go out as winners. This has been a struggle for the Cornhuskers this year in 2002. Very un-Lincoln-like, their record at 7-6. and six. Ole Miss taking over. They've got a four-point lead here late in the third quarter. Three wide receivers. For Eli Manning. And here is Manning with time downfield. And he throws the strike. It's caught at the 49 yard line of Nebraska by Bill Flowers. A gain of 25 and a first down for the Rebels. Manning is able to step up in the pocket with really just outstanding protection. And when you have this kind of protection, you can deliver the ball. Washington is actually in pretty good coverage here on this dig route. Comes over the top of the ball is between the eight and the four. That's just terrific accuracy on the part of Manning. Boy, what a great throw. He's now 22 of 36 for 254 yards and a touchdown. First and 10 from the 49-yard line in Nebraska. Manning again. And Manning near side. Ball is dropped at the 40-yard line by Mike Espy. That was a perfect strike. Right in the numbers. Gonna be frustrating for number 10 when you do that. You put it between the ones and he can't come up with it. Again, we talked earlier about the pressure that's on that young man to deliver constantly. He just, it, it's tough when you can't have a bad game. Every game you have to play well. You just do if you're the quarterback here. 
Second down for Eli Manning. He'll go out of the shotgun this time. He's got four wide receivers. And there are the numbers. A quick throw, and it's incomplete. A dangerous throw at midfield. And that'll bring up third down. Chris Collins was well covered by Lanny Hopkins. Lanny Hopkins, the rover, comes over as they rolled the coverage to that side. They guessed right in terms of the direction that Manning was going. Manning does so many of those things that his brother Peyton does so effortlessly. So it would seem. It's interesting that you point that out. Peyton Manning, of course, graduated in three years at Tennessee this past semester. That quarterback with all he had on his plate and a 4.0 grade point average. Amazing. Third down for Ole Miss. They've had their share of third and long this afternoon in this ballgame. Manning firing and it's caught and then lost. And let's see who has it. And I think Ole Miss came up with the football, but he is not going to have the first down because of it. Collins made the reception, lost the football, and lost it for a minute. Couldn't find the football, but Ole Miss did recover. Nebraska comes with the blitz, and Collins, look at the, look at the room that Fabian Washington is giving him. That's an easy first down. Now as he turns around, as he comes back to hit him, he's separates him from the ball. Collins doesn't know where it is and how lucky for him that it bounces right back to him. Nonetheless, as you pointed out, it is a fourth down, and it appears from this vantage point that Ole Miss may go for it. Of course, it might be the thing to get you offside, but we'll see. Fourth and three, Eli Manning under center. I don't like this call, Jeff. No fake here. It is Manning firing ball up in the air and almost intercepted. So Nebraska gets the football. The last time Nebraska had the football, they were three and out. They didn't know what they were doing offensively. They had no momentum. I really question this call right here. Pin them down and make them drive the length, which they've been unable to do so far today. What a big play, though. Chris Collins losing that football. Just how large will that loom you start thinking about? Well, we talk about Fabian Washington. He's had a pretty good pretty good game. Not only a couple of passes broken up, two or three, but he's had a half dozen tackles and now a forced fumble. So let's see if Nebraska can take advantage. They've got good field position at their 42-yard line. They're down by four. Under 30 seconds to play in the third quarter. Jamal Lord out of the shotgun formation. And here is the give. Not at the line of scrimmage is Darren Diedrich hit by Ryan Hamilton, the linebacker, a pickup of two. And that'll mean second and eight with the clock running here. And this will give Jamal Lord some extra seconds here as the clock runs out to get over and talk with Frank Solich and Turner Gill about exactly what they need to do here on this second down play. Get a little momentum going heading into the fourth stanza. And that is the end of the third quarter. A lot of plays from the third quarter that you think about. But that fake punt by Nebraska set up the score by Ole Miss. And the Rebels lead the Huskers 24-20. The Main State Independence Bowl from Shreveport, Louisiana. Nebraska trailing Ole Miss as we begin the fourth quarter. The handoff on second and eight, plowing ahead for the Cornhuskers, trying to get some yardage through the interior of the Ole Miss defense is David Horn. And he picks up maybe one or two. Nebraska, 262 yards in the first half, only 53 in the third quarter, Todd. Well, certainly some adjustments have been made, and one of the things that has been happening particularly, you've seen Oliver in on that many more plays. He's able to play closer to the line of scrimmage because the threat of the pass has been non-existent here in the second half. Third and seven for Nebraska. Lord, quick drop, firing near side. It is caught by Wilson Thomas, and he is out of bounds very quickly at around midfield. It's a gain of about seven, very close to a first down. I got to tell you, Wilson Thomas must have known exactly where he was, because watch after he makes the catch, how he, how he backpedals somewhat languidly out of bounds, like, oh, I know I've got it. So he just eases out of bounds. I think it was awfully close. And now they're going to, it appears they're going to measure it. He seemed pretty sure of himself as he went out, as opposed to turning up field maybe and getting that extra yard or two. You surprised with how this game has gone? I mean, particularly after the opening set, 
when Nebraska just powered through Ole Miss. Well, I, I, I am surprised. I have to give credit to the front seven of Ole Miss because at that point you'd have thought they were going to get run over. But really, really surprises me is some of the decision making that's been made. You know, the going for it on fourth down there near midfield, the fake punt on your own 35. Just strange decisions. So enough for the first down for Nebraska. With the ball in Ole Miss territory here as we begin the fourth quarter. A double tight end set for the Huskers. And Lord this time out of the shotgun with receivers right and left. And Lord will keep the football. And Ole Miss defense not faked out. Brought down at the 45 yard line. It's a gain of two. It'll bring up second and eight. Jesse Mitchell is there with his fourth tackle of the ball game. I was about to say one of the things that surprised me is that Lord has not run the ball as much. But one of the reasons is number 95. Mitchell at six foot one, 280 pounds. Chuck Driesbeck, the defensive coordinator, pointed out that he's a quick twitch guy. And what he means by that is, as opposed to being an anchor, a two gap guy that just sits between the center and guard. He's a guy that gets up field and can make some plays for you. Second and eight for the Nebraska offense. They're down by four to Ole Miss here in the Mainstay Independence Bowl. The option, near side. Lord keeping the football and he goes down after a gain of three. Eddie Strong, the middle linebacker, was stalking him and knocked him down. One of the reasons, one of the reasons that Lord, which surprises me that they go weak side, is you try and catch people by surprise, but you need the quicker quarterback. Crouch made his living going weak side, but he was a 4-4-5 sprinter. Lord, with all his attributes, does not have that speed. And as a result, Mrs. Ole Miss, rather, able to run him down on the short side. Take a look at the numbers on Jamal Lord. Now, remember, he had 88 yards rushing in the first half, so Ole Miss has contained him well here. On third and five, option Lord brought down by the Ole Miss defense, and there he is again, Jesse Mitchell, brought down at the line of scrimmage, no game. Very confused by that. We just talked about the fact that this is not his forte. Here he is. The quick twitch man able to come off the block of the guard and drop Lord in his tracks. Number 95 having a terrific game for the Rebels. So on fourth down, Nebraska will punt. Kyle Larson is the punter, unless, of course, they like to fake it. Larson punting it away. A high floating spiral. Great special teams by Nebraska. Brought down at the two-yard line, maybe the three, by Marquis Simmons, who is there. It's a 39-yard punt, and Ole Miss with some difficult field position now with a lead of 24 to 20. It is Capital Bowl week. Capital One Bowl week. We are in Shreveport, Louisiana, where Ole Miss leading Nebraska by four in the fourth quarter. And Ole Miss with a first and ten from their three-yard line. Manning on the handoff and plowing straight ahead is Ronald McClendon. And not much there for McClendon as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Tonight, Capital One Bowl Week concludes its triple header at 8 o'clock Eastern time, 5 o'clock Pacific. The Wildcats of K-State face the Arizona State Sun Devils and the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. Live from Qualcomm Stadium in beautiful San Diego, California. Mel Roberson, what a season he's had for Kansas State. Pretty close to a double grand himself there. Second and ten from the three-yard line. A handoff again trying to pound it on that Nebraska defensive line is the fullback, Rick Rosano. And he is wrapped up by Williams, the outside linebacker. It's a gain of three, and it'll bring up third down at about seven. Decent pickup by Razzano, but I was thinking to myself there on second down. That would have been the time to go play action, because now on third down, you know they're going to have to throw, and that's a little more predictable. Second down, the play action, you could have caught Nebraska flat-footed. So here is Eli Manning now out of the shotgun formation. He's got three wide receivers. And rolling out of his end zone to the right on the run. And a diving attempt made. He was juggling the football. The
the official says it's incomplete. Mike Espy was trying to make a spectacular grab, but he can't come up with the football. And an injured rebel right now on the football field. Rick Rizzano is the one who comes out, and he's got a cut block on Kelsey. And I think maybe he might have gotten kneed in the head. When you roll right, your fullback is going to come out on a cut block. Watch number 42. Look at that. And his head and neck hit him right in the thigh. He actually, as strange as it sounds, Jeff, he necked him or headed him as opposed to got kneed. There's the bobble right there at the end. You can see from that backside, you can't see the ball. And the this same replay that you're seeing is what everybody else is seeing in the stands. And the feet were down, but evidently possession was not established. Having played fullback in college, Jeff, I can tell you I've had a couple of these where the knee comes in between the shoulder and the head, and that's, let me just say, that's not fun and it doesn't feel very good. It defines what you hear the broadcasters say when they say, he's got a stinger. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Stings all the way down the side of you. Rick Rosano, the sophomore out of Milford, Ohio. 5'11", 240-pounder. Now, if you looked at him right there, it, it, that has to be a fullback, doesn't it? And a good one. That's a fullback body right there. No fourth down. We'll see Cody Ridgeway. Standing about seven yards deep in his own end zone. That's Dewan Gross. He's a return man. He's the punt. And this is Gross. Gross spinning and hit at the 40-yard line of Ole Miss. A 38-yard punt. And a five-yard return, so Nebraska was some great field position to tackle by Eddie Strong. You know, it's interesting the number of times we see Eddie Strong in on the tackle, the number of times we have had star players for Ole Miss make tackles on special teams. We've called Strong, we've called Collins, we've called Espy. It's interesting the number of starters that they have on special teams. He's a tremendous football player. Big hits. Missed a number of games with injury. This is the best field position for Nebraska. In the second half, the handoff working against Ole Miss. And on the give, it is a pickup of about four yards for Nebraska. And there's a late penalty marker at the 30-yard line. Diedrich with four. Well, I thought this was... Once again, we've seen that earlier where offensive linemen have hit a little bit late. But this time they catch Ole Miss with the late hit. After the play, get ball, personal foul, defense, 15 yards, first down. And, and Jeff, the, Jeff, the flag was thrown by the referee. So he was in the backfield. He must have seen it clearly. That's a huge penalty, though. Got Cliff on the left, Solich on the right. Nebraska helped by the late hit. And now with great field position. Down by four. First down from the 20-yard line. Both receivers to the near side. John Clement motion to the right. Here is the pitch running room for David Horn. And David Horn is brought down inside the 15 to about the 14-yard line again of six. Second and four. Tackle by Justin Wade. Judd Davies, the fullback, even though he had a poor throw, made a nice block on that play. And you can see the totals. That's not too bad. I mean, it really is. That's 160 yards between the two of them. But hasn't quite been enough. The lead. Second and five. And the Ole Miss defense rises behind Jesse Mitchell as he hits David Horn. That's a loss of five yards. I believe that's his fourth tackle for loss, and he has really created a lot of problems before Nebraska. He's just he's just so quick off the ball. He's able to beat that double team, and Horn has absolutely no place to go, and now they come up third and nine. So a lot of Ole Miss fans who have made the trek from Oxford on their feet now. 
to stir that Ole Miss defense on third down and nine. Here is Lord with time firing, and the catch is made. How close to the first down is Wilson Thomas, the man who always knows where he has to go to get the first down. This is awfully close. It is a pickup of nine yards. You, you can hear the boos from the Ole Miss faithful, and I think he got a very generous spot. I'm not sure that he was that far downfield, and when we get a chance to see a replay, decide for yourself where he catches the ball and where his feet are. So they will come out and measure. Stretch it, stretch it here. Uh, here uh, we go. I think it's a first. He called it first down for Nebraska. What a clutch throw by Jamal Lord. And a terrific catch by Wilson Thomas. Ole Miss comes with a blitz. Now watch Thomas and where he catches the ball and where his feet land. He's in the air right there. Now he gets pushed back. It appears to about the 11-yard line. But of course, the argument you could make if you're a Nebraska fan is to say, well, you know what? He got pushed back when he was in midair. Regardless, first down for the Huskers. On first and goal from the 10-yard line, here is the pitch. And it is Horn who steps out of bounds at the eight yard line a gain of two we are here in shreveport louisiana a heck of a football game of the mainstay independence bowl between nebraska and Ole miss on a perfect weather night here in shreveport it couldn't be better in late december than this and this has been a terrific football game all afternoon the way it's gone back and forth between nebraska and Ole miss one team seems to get the upper hand and then it changes it's very difficult here at this part of the field Nebraska can get a first down inside the one, but these are difficult yards, especially for a team that's not a throwing team. Second and goal from the eight-yard line for the Cornhuskers. Here is Lord slipping and down. It's a loss of about four yards. And Travis Blanchard was over there, the safety to make sure that Lord wasn't going anywhere. Now they're going to have to throw the ball. And I'm surprised that we haven't seen Harry in the game. After that long bomb that he would I would think that a quick tight end like that would be quite helpful in between the hashes and inside the 20. But Nebraska's going to call timeout. And this is a good decision to talk it over. Lord's numbers, 6-12, 69 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Can Nebraska get it into the end zone? Can they get some points out of this? We'll find out. Long conversation over on the sidelines, longer than usual. Now they come right out to the line of scrimmage. They want to dictate to the defense exactly what they're going to do in their three wide receiver package, Jeff. Here we go. Here is Lord firing into the end zone. Penalty marker. Penalty marker about five yards deep in the end zone. And this may be going against Ole Miss. Wilson Thomas was over there, so was Travis Johnson in coverage. We talked about Harry and their, their, their quick tight end is the one who is involved in this, but they may pick it up because the ball was away from him. Flag is waved off. Pass is deemed uncatchable. Here comes, here comes Thomas to the outside. And he, he's going to fall down. And the interception is going to come. He gets both feet in bounds. And so indeed, well, he, he, this brings up the point. If this is the interception, and if the, and if the thing is picked up, evidently they call it an incomplete pass. It looked to me like they had his feet down. Here is Josh Brown with a 29-yard field goal attempt. It is long enough, and it is good. So Nebraska has cut into the Ole Miss lead. It's now 24-23 with seven minutes and 50 seconds to play. And a look at Frank Solich, who can't believe he's not getting anything from the officials. Well, that's how it is. Down by one to the Rebels. Here is the flag right here. It's going to be on the defender covering Harrington. He comes downfield. Now, the call at the end of the play is that they pick up the flag because the ball is uncatchable. Well, the penalty is in the middle, so that can't be the case. And this can't be an incompletion because there's the foot that's down. Watch the right foot is going to get down too. And so now the official comes over and says incomplete. He didn't see it. He was out of position. You could see the reaction of the old Miss faithful. 
everything was problematic in that situation because in both cases, they did, couldn't quite get it right. And bring in Joe Paterno, let him chase those guys a little bit. Chris Collins is deep. And taking it to five yard line. Brought down after 17, and that's where Ole Miss will take over. It is a 12-yard return. We salute the airmen assigned to Pacific Air Forces watching this telecast on AFN, the American Forces Network, including the men and women of the 374th Airlift Wing at Yokota Air Base, Japan, who resupply the Western Pacific. Thanks for tuning in to the Mainstay Independence Bowl on AFN and happy holidays from all of us here at ESPN. On first down for Ole Miss and the give is straight ahead. It's a pickup of a couple of yards for Tremaine Turner before he is wrapped up and that'll bring up second down and about eight Barrett Rude the middle linebacker makes the hit. Let's go down to Stacy Pates right now downstairs. Well, guys, on the Nebraska sidelines, as you can imagine, the seniors are especially emotional. Darren Diedrich, in particular, came to his defense before they took the field, and he said, listen, guys, you have got to get your jobs done. We cannot let them score again. We will not let them score again. He's a senior. He's an emotional emotional guy, and he's not going to lose this bowl game. On second down, Eli Manning getting rid of the football, and it's caught. The catch is made across the 35 by Kerry Johnson working on Josh Bullocks. It's a gain of 20 and a first down for Ole Miss. Ole Miss clearly can ill afford to play not to lose with only a one point lead. And as a result, the running game now has to go out the window a little bit. Watch right at the end of the play. He takes a shot from the backside. He delivers the ball on the money once again on the dig route. And I've been particularly impressed with his accuracy and his toughness putting the ball where it needs to be in crucial situations. Johnson and Biddle to the left, Collins to the right on first down from the 37-yard line. Manning play action setting going long, man out there, and over the head of Tay Biddle, who was open. He had a couple of steps on Dewan Gross. Here's where a play before can actually affect you. He does the exact same situation, which is he fakes the draw play, but because he got hit from the backside on the play before, he hurries this ball. If he doesn't hurry this ball, if he steps up, and he knows it, if he steps up and takes his time, he can deliver the ball on the money. He said he hurries it, and as a result, it's a long completion. 24 43, 281, and a touchdown. There's the numbers. Second down, Manning, and it is complete. The catch is made in more. Into Nebraska territory is Chris Collins, and run out of bounds at the 25-yard line, a gain of 32 for Ole Miss. And they are finding some seams right now in the Nebraska defense. We talked about Fabian Washington, some of the good things that he has done. This is one of the bad things. Okay, the guy catches it in front of you. It's a first down. Now make the tackle. When you miss a tackle like that, you afford a lot of extra yards, and Collins able to pick up an extra 20 yards on that play. It's a seventh missed tackle for Nebraska today. On first down for Ole Miss. The give, left side trying to turn it out is Turner. And Turner is brought down at the 23-yard line by Josh Bullocks. It's a gain of eight, maybe nine yards, depending on the spot. You know, the number of times that he has come in, we talked about his fresh legs earlier in the game as he bounced up and down. This time, this time Turner does the same thing, bounces to the outside and shows some speed. I'm surprised number 47 hasn't had a few more touches in this game. On second and short to the fullback. And nothing there for Rick Rosano, who runs into Barrett Rude, the middle linebacker, and it's no game. So that'll bring up third and short, third and about three. The, the advantage of being third and short here, as you can see Eli Manning look over, is that he's got a number of opportunities here, third and short as opposed to third and long. He can run a slant, he can run a quick screen, he can run the hooks. The hooks have been really good for Ole Miss all day long. Third and three for Ole Miss. And the pitch. And 
tripped up is Ronald McClendon. The Nebraska defender is Chris Kelsey, and he read it perfectly. Now, in addition to Kelsey showing his speed to the outside and dropping him, this now becomes a field goal beyond 40 yards. And you and I have talked about this, Jeff, and that's where the percentages drop. Kelsey is not fooled by the fullback fake, the misdirection option that has become so popular in contemporary football. Number 57 runs him down, and now we're looking at about a 42, 43 yard field goal. From Auburn, Nebraska is Chris Kelsey. I mentioned this because as Jeff you and I have talked about throughout the season once you go from 40 yards and beyond the drop in percentage is precipitous close to 20 to 25 percent outside of 40 yards for kickers in college football. Jonathan Nichols with a 43 yard field goal attempt. Cody Ridgeway is holding. moving at all. And the kick is oh, long enough and it is gone. Jonathan Nichols heads from 43 yards out. And the Rebels have grown their lead on the Huskers. They're now up by four points with four and a half minutes left in the ball game. The mainstay Independence Bowl. It's been a great game today. Ole Miss and Nebraska. Rebels up by four. And for David Cutcliffe, just needing his defense to get it done again with this Nebraska offense. And inevitably, we see this, Jeff, over and over again in football games. You get the lead. You get that crucial extra point, i.e., in this case, four points as opposed to a three-point lead. There is a tendency for the defense to relax a little bit. And his charges, particularly Chuck Driesbach, the defensive coordinator, has to make sure they don't do that. Lee Rogers kicking off. It is short and dies about the seven yard line. It is scooped up by Josh Davis and he is brought down at the 21. It's a 13 yard return. Tonight, Capital One Bowl Week concludes its triple header at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 o'clock Pacific. K State taking on Arizona State, the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl from San Diego, California. A lot of great players in this game. I look forward to that. Newman is one of the best cover corners in the nation. You can see by McDonald's numbers, he wants to have an opportunity to show his wares on national television. Uh, you like people that are hip at a football game that are ahead of you as far as programming goes. You know, people that little bust a <laughs> move, you mean? That's, that's exactly it. Uh, now, for man. Nebraska, they have plenty of time to do what they do so terrific, and that is run the ball between the tackles or run the option. They don't need to really hurry up. Well, what they're talking about right there, in case you're wondering at home, is that there was 4.30 on the clock, and so obviously there had to be some time taken off the clock. It should be right around 4.21 or 4.19, something like that. Set the game clock to 4.22. Oh, I was off by one. Dang it. 22 seconds. Hate when that happens. Very nice, Todd. Very nice. Well, as you were as you were pointing out, Jeff, and that's very astute, is the fact that they're not in a hurry. But there's a tendency offensively to do that. Oh no, we're down four. What are we going to do? They can do what they've been doing. They can still run between the tackles, still run their options. Quarterback draws. They can do all of that. But you have to wonder. As I, as, I, as I say that, Jeff, I'm still, I'm still, the decision making has been very curious on the part of the offensive cognizetti for Nebraska. So who knows, really? Who knows what's going to go down here? The decision to throw the ball, the decision to go for it on fourth down, the decision not to go for it on fourth down as well. You know, I'm reminded of I'm reminded of Chicago at times like this, and that is, does anybody <laughs> really know what time it is? I'm not old enough to know that. Oh, group. please! <laughs> Peter Cetera, Terry Kath, man, they could sing it. They could bring it. Bobby yes. Lamb. Color my world with red. The Nebraska Cornhusker fans standing up here in Shreveport, trying to get those Huskers to move the ball down the field. So first down from the 21, three wide receivers for Jamal Lord. Lord on the option. 
He'll keep the football and he'll go down at the 23 yard line by Josh Cooper, the junior out of Marietta, Georgia, a gain of two. It'll bring up second and eight, and the clock will continue to move. But that was a huge tackle because one of the things you do with a three wide receiver package, then, is you spread people out, and that creates more gaps for your running quarterback. Cooper comes from the interior and drops him. If Cooper doesn't, we're looking at about midfield for number 10. Second down and seven. Here is Lord pumping, going long, and it is incomplete. Trying to pick up about 25 yards along the Nebraska sideline with Matt Harriet, who made the touchdown catch earlier in the game, and it's incomplete. The Nebraska seniors today have played a critical role for the Huskers. They have indeed, but they trade all of that right now for a first down. On third down, Nebraska is six for 15, and now third and seven. The four wide receivers for Jamal Lord. Out of the shotgun. In trouble. Flushed out of the pocket and dropped down. At the 22-yard line by Josh Cooper. It's a loss of two. And it'll bring up fourth down. Well, again, you know that you can't go all out in a pass rush because of the running skills of the quarterback. And this is what Cooper does not do. And what great athletic ability. He jumps up in anticipation of a pass, is able to get back on his feet and be quick enough to drop Lord for, as you point out, the two-yard loss. Kyle Larson is the punter. And Chris Collins is deep. Roll miss. And this is a fine punt. And here comes Collins the middle and down he goes at the 33 yard line it's a 54 yard punt by Larson and a six yard return and Ole Miss has the lead and the football let's go to Chris Fowler now in our studio Chris all right Jeff thank you Nebraska fans are certainly familiar with K-State's little tank of a running back tough Darren Sproles a major challenge for the Sun Devils defense coming up next from San Diego when we're done in Shreveport all right look forward to it Frank Solich Get that football back. Now, what could be costly now for Nebraska? Don't forget, remember they got down to the 10 yard line on the third down. They had to call that timeout. So now Nebraska with only two timeouts remaining. From the 33, the handoff over the left side, Tremaine Turner, and Turner with some running room. And coming very close to a first down for Ole Miss. It's a gain of nine. It'll bring up second and one. If you're Nebraska, you have eight, nine people in the box. And Turner still makes some people miss in the middle of the field. The 360 move out there. So if they get a first down here, Steve, that's going to be that's going to be close to being it for Ole Miss. The idea, I'm sure, as you saw Frank Solich, was to say stuff him on first and call a timeout. Second down and two. And Manning keeps the football, and he has enough for an Ole Miss first down. A pickup of three, and the Rebels are starting to look pretty good in this football game. That's a great call, because he comes up to the line of scrimmage, and he has a play call that if he sees that he's got enough of an opening, he gooses the center and taps his butt and, hits <laughs> and goes ahead. And this is in jeopardy now. Down by four with 2.01 left. That is a remarkable run the Cornhuskers have had. Just staggering total of football success. Well, I think I think that before, you know, it seems to me there have been so many people critical of this year where Nebraska's concerned. But let's, let's take stock here, Jeff, and that is over the last couple of years, Notre Dame has had losing seasons, USC has had losing seasons, Alabama has been down, Michigan, you know, Notre Dame. I mean, over and over again, these major programs, Nebraska continues. 34 straight seasons. There's 34 straight seasons of nine wins. And that's unbelievable. But if you're Frank Solich, it's very tough because of those who came before you. Bob Devaney, almost 81% victories uh, there. Tom Osborne, almost 84% national titles for Devaney, national titles for Osborne. I mean, the, the bar is raised to almost very high. Uh, yeah, a, a freaky level as far as American sports goes. It's Everest, no doubt. Still, I think that 
the people have to be a little bit patient and cognizant of the fact that right now parity is not just in the National Football League. It's filtered its way down to Division I college football. On first down from the 44-yard line, the give right side. And trying to find some room is Tremaine Turner. And Turner picks up six yards. And another timeout by Frank Solich. Patience is not a word that is in the vocabulary of Nebraska fans, Todd, because they haven't had to have any. Talking about all those Orange Bowls, and New Year's Day Bowls over the years, being a Nebraska fan is, uh, is a very happy thing when you consider all of the success that that program has had with all the Heisman Trophy winners and the great players and great coaches. You know, it's, it's a difficult time of adjustment if you wear that red coat on the weekends. Well, they've been spoiled. <laughs> Obviously, the success has been so much. I mean, it's just amazing to think about the number, the number of wins. You, 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 we were just talking about the 40 win seasons, or excuse me, 40 straight winning seasons, 34 times you've won nine games. I mean, that's just unprecedented. But again, you know, the onus falls on the shoulder of that man, and he definitely feels the pressure. When we visited with him, I just flat out asked him, I said, Frank, how are you doing? You know, just one of those questions, and his response was that he understood this when he took the job. He understands the expectation levels there in Lincoln. And he's going to deal with it. He's going to rise to the challenge. Pacific Life Holiday Bowl is coming up next. Bay State and Arizona State. Nebraska offensively had 262 yards in the first half. And they have come up with only 80 yards here in the second half. Very one telling of the, statistic. One of the things is deceptive that a lot of people don't realize is how well Ole Miss was playing at the end of the year. Barely losing to LSU and defeating Mississippi State. Their defense had played very well in those two games. On second and four, Manning with an audible changing at the line of scrimmage. And the handoff is to Turner, met at the line of scrimmage. Not much there. Pickup of three. And Lenny Hopkins is there. Chris Kelsey's career coming to an end. Had a hamstring injury this year. I, I, I think that had he not had that injury, I think he would have been in competition for the Outland and Lombardi and some of the other awards. Great defensive lineman. Of course, Gross, uh, a candidate for the Thorpe Award. Of course, great kick returner in his own right. The career is coming to an end here in this game. On third and one for Ole Miss. And I don't know. I don't know if Rick Rosano, the fullback, has it or not. He ran into Kelsey. He was such a terrific tackler that hit him and pushed him back. Well, this is an advantage for Nebraska, too, because it stops the clock as opposed to had he had just flat out not gotten it, then the clock would have kept running. And he's going to be a little bit short by about, it appears from my vantage point, about a foot, foot and a half. Here comes the chain gang. They will measure to see if he has it. Trying to tell from the spot. I already told you it's a foot and a half short. Don't you believe me? Foot and a half. Uh, you know, after all these weeks, you know, I still like to be a few checks and balances. Oh, on man. A little, a little too safe. Try, try to keep you in line on all these months. The Capital One player of the game. How about Eli Manning? Look at the numbers on Manning. Over 300 yards. I look forward to seeing him in the NFL. Now he's going to look really foolish if on this quarterback sneak he doesn't get it. But I understand why Ole Miss is doing this. They do not want to punt the ball again to Gross. I think he'll try and draw him off sides. I think he's going to sneak it. I don't think you're going to try and draw him off sides. Okay. Here we go. Fourth and one. I think he is because the clock is running and he's going to bleed it all the way down. Yep. There it is. Yeah. Advantage Christensen. Oh, well. After all, Jeff, I played the game. <laughs> and Todd, you would know this because you played. <laughs> now this is this is what's interesting. If you're at home, if you're a Nebraska fan, you say, please, please, please kick the ball to number five. If you're an Ole Miss fan, you say, look, 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 just shank the thing. Kick it downfield. Don't give them a chance to set up a return. Or if you've got the leg, just blast the thing into the end zone. But then again, I'm guessing that even if you do kick the ball into the end zone, number five is going to field it and go, right? All right, with 40 seconds left in the ballgame, Cody Ridgeway is the punter. And 
Gross is deep. And Ridgeway gets it away. It is a high floating spiral. Taken at the 16 yard line. Gross is thrown out of bounds at the 20. So the opportunity for Frank Solich. Tavera on the stop. Tavares Horn has the outside contained, and there is absolutely no way that he was going to let him get to the outside. And it appears with 20 seconds remaining that this is going to come about. 41 years. A lot of streaks ending today, Jeff. If indeed the score maintains itself as it is. 44 yard punt, five yard return. 28 seconds are left. First down for Jamal Lord, the quarterback out of the shotgun formation. In trouble and down goes Lord. The 12 yard line, Josh Cooper is there as he has been all afternoon long. And the clock is running with 15 seconds left. Cooper has, has had three straight big plays for Ole Miss. There is Lord downfield, and the catch is made at the 36 yard line by Ross Pilkington and Travis Johnson is there four seconds are left don't go away just yet I have in my mind Kentucky LSU folks <laughs> stay away from that Gatorade just yet you never yeah right don't pour it on coach Cutcliffe just yet all right here is Lord shotgun formation with four wide receivers Firing long. And it is picked off. Intercepted by Ole Miss. The streak has come to an end for Nebraska. Travis Johnson up with the football. And Eli Manning and the Ole Miss Rebels have defeated the Nebraska Cornhuskers 27-23 at the Mainstay Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana. Our final score, 27-23, Ole Miss a winner. Coming up, the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Todd Christensen, Stacey Pates, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Jeff Hullinger. For some reason, stats of this game, log on to ESPN.com. Your home for college football on the Internet. Well, let's go to Chris Fowler in our studio right now.